couple of things about Chitra, you know, just introducing and then we'll have the panel discussions. Um, I'll be contributing as we go along. But it's very interesting that we'll be doing Chitra today. And I believe, you know, uh, Jupiter, as we speak now, is transiting Chitra, Nakshatra. And um, in the uh, in the in the in Libra Libra side of it, you know. so Chitra Nakshatra spans from 20 23 degrees 20 minutes of Virgo to six degrees 40 minutes of Libra. So two others of Chitra Nakshatra they fall in Virgo and two others or two quarters fall in Libra. Now. The word Chitra comes from, uh, you know, Chitra means a beautiful picture or something which looks, um, and Chitra brings the gifts of this constellation called as a speaker or spika or however you pronounce that. And uh, this nakshatra um, is connected to Twastar. The deity of this nakshatra is Twastar. And uh, later on, Twastar was also called uh, as Vishwakarma. You know, so he was a, a craftsman. He was an um, artisan. So you can see this connection with, uh, you know, uh, with architecture. Now, what is Chitra? Chitra means a beautiful picture, as I mentioned. But Chitra also means to think, to comprehend, to reflect upon, and to design. So the literal meaning of Chitra is uh, the brightest one or the brilliant one, the multicolored one. So you can see all of these themes in Chitra, multicolors. Okay, a work of art or pretty pictures or that which is illusionary or that which shows you some element of magic or illusion because this nakshatra is also connected to Maya or illusion. So anything that is uh, bright, anything that is colored, and that which strikes the eyes is what is said to be, you know, connected to this nakshatra, which is Chitra. And what I've typically seen with this nakshatra is um, they are, they, they can understand some complex and mysterious, uh, you know, things. And also about Chitra, Chitra reflects the potential of our soul and it is connected to you know not many people would speak about that maybe EG and uh, Dr. Toki will talk about that is they're connected to law they're connected to truth they're connected to legal matters and I've seen when mercury comes here people would be very interested in speaking about truth bringing uh, a lot of uh, information related to uh, any subject of their study and also what I've seen with this nakshatra is this nakshatra is connected to Chitra Gupta. Who is Chitra Gupta? Chitra Gupta was the accountant, the karmic accountant of Lord Yama. And Chitra Gupta, the literal translation in Sanskrit means secret images or secret pictures. So as an assistant of Yama and the keeper of the Akashic records, you know, Chitra Gupta is a keeper of the Akashic Records. And what is Akashic Records is everything that has been happening has been, you know, um, you can think that we live in, uh, you know, it's like a big, big brother house. You know, everything is recorded. Everything is stored. All this information, what is happening. So all your lifetimes, you know, how many, how, how, how many ever lifetimes that you've had, everything has been captured. You know, and that is there with Chitra Gupta. So what I've seen with this nakshatra is uh, this nakshatra is because it's connected to Twasta. It's also connected to shapeliness of the bodies. It's connected to beauty. And many believe that Twasta or Vishw Vishwakarma is uh, the shaper of the embryos. Shaper of the embryo and the womb. So if you look at the desire of this nakshatra is to have wonderful children, 
I think you know EJ and Aditya will be talking and talking about this. So <clears throat> that is what you see with Chitra. And one more point I wanted to mention about Chitra, uh, you know, before Bharat Ramji can start talking about uh, the other aspects of Chitra, that is, is going to go very more in detail, is uh, about uh, the un, you know, the the pearl. You know, pearl. Usually, if you know that when the first drops of the rain fall, that's when what happens is there is turbulence in the water, in the in the oceans where the the oyster is there, and some sand particles usually get into its shell. You know, the oyster shell, and that kind of irritates the oyster. And when it irritates the oyster, it creates it secretes a, a sort of a, a liquid. It's just as a as a response to the irritation so it creates a liquid which solidifies later to become the most beautiful pearl so i have seen many artists sculptures who can bring their masterpieces when they are going through you know um, difficult times in their life they bring their best work out in the most most precarious situations you know when they are irritated when they are depressed that's when the best work comes out. So they work with, you know, creative projects. They work with art. They work with beauty. It's about shining. And I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, ophthalmologists, you know, surgeons who operate on the eyes can be connected to Chitra because Chitra is all about seeing beautiful things. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go to, uh, you know, Bharat Ramji. And before we go to Bharat Ramji, what I wanted to show you is, how Chitra works. Chitra also has a connection to photographic memory. And today on KRS channel, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Guinness World Record. And we'll see, we'll check with Dr. Togi and his memory skills, how we can, how we can replicate that information that he has. And Dr. Togi is known to be, uh, and even, even Bharat Ramji, both of them are very interested in the Indian railways. They, they study about Indian railways and they know a lot about Indian railways. And Dr. Togi has a knack of remembering, uh, you know, uh, stations. I remember once me, Bharat and, uh, you know, Aditya were sitting and we were discussing and he rattled out all the names. I said, this is a, an excellent thing for, uh, you know, Dr. Togi to come and share. So. I would challenge anybody who can remember, you know, 50, 60 names of stations, different stations, and he can rattle them out in two seconds. So we are going for a, a Guinness World Record. So, Dr. Togi, yes. how did you how did you get interested in this, and how how do you remember so many names? I was really fascinated. So 50, 60 stations, and you can just rattle them out, you know, without even maybe we can blindfold you for people that who think really that with a sheet that clearly shows some mercury effect is there correct yes. <laughs> remembering and so yeah but anyway i was always interested in railways it was either as everyone knows i'm doing astronomy but it was either for me it was either astronomy or indian railways i would have joined either astronomy or indian railways so that was my thing maybe that means in the research and teaching line if not that it was indian railways and i always my childhood days i will not hey i will go and sit near the railway track you know that there was gates opening and I will operate that gates. And uh, there was many funny scenes. I should not reveal what all happened. But <laughs> but just I was sit there and see the train. And just on the, see the train numbers, the coach numbers, the engine numbers. And they all reveal some information. But I, would, I won't go in detail. And then it was like, whenever I will go and I will write my log books, you know, what time the station has, what time the train has reached the station, whenever I go from my Mumbai to my native town. My native town comes in south. So I always used to take the Pune route, you know, Bombay to Pune route. And then I hearted all the names and it was like, fine, okay. Uh, I was interested in that. So that's how it developed. And remembering all kilometers also. Now I don't remember all kilometers, but most of most things I remember. But that that I forget, forget now. And that it was very good because when time the train is always late, people will say, okay, when the train will reach, then they will give just give an estimate of one hour, one and a half hour. But with with the train speed and with the numbers you remember, you can tell exactly what time the station will be there. 
within and the error will be within 5 minutes which is fine so that was another advantage sometimes the train runs fast if you have like 50 km stretch and the train runs like 75 km per hour instead of 50 then there is like 50% error then looking at the train speed and station distance i was able to calculate that too okay this train will reach at this time so that's how the fascination started and you can do that all that even with the electric poles and all you can see the numbers written that number is also has got some meaning but anyway that's how it developed so uh, can you can you rattle out the names from you know yeah uh, actually a just, technology... just for the audience here just for yeah maybe i will you know, rattle just... out the names of central railways that too from the southeastern zone uh, going to the pune side to so starting from now I don't know it's CSTM or CSMT, but Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus Main, and then comes Masjid Bandas and Mumbai. Mumbai, Chhatrapati Shivaji yeah. Terminus Main, Mumbai. Then comes Masjid Bandas, Santos Road, Baikala, then Chinchpokli, Karirur, Parel, Dadar, Matunga, Sain, Kurla, Vidavar, Ghatkopar, Vikroli, Kanjumak, Banduk, Mulund. Now after Banduk there was Nahur. At that time it was not there, but now it's there. Nahur, then Mulun, Thane, Kalwa, Mumra, Diva, Dombi, Takuli, Kalyan, Vitalwadi, Ullasnagar, Ambarnath, Badlapur, Wangni, Shelu, Neral, Bipuri, Karjat. Karjat is where 100 kilometers the train station stops. After Karjat, you have uh, two lines one goes to Palasdari, one goes to Pune, and I will rattle out the names from Pune. Parjat, the Karjat, then Palasdari, Kandala, Lonavala, Malavli, Kamshet, Vadgaon, Talegaon. Oravadi, Shalavadi, Begrevadi, Devuro, Akuri, Sinswad, Pimpri, Kasavadi, Dapodi, Karki, Shivajanagar, Pune. Pune is 192 kilometers from Mumbai. Then from Pune, you have two lines again going to Meerut side, going to Solapur. From Pune, going to the Solapur line, you will get uh, Adapsar, Manjri, Budruk, Loni, Uruli, Yevad, Kedwan, Kadetan, Patas, Down. Down is 263 kilometers from Mumbai. After Down, you have um, Boribial, Malton, Big One, Jintirod, Parivadi, Vashimbe, Pofala, Jiur, Bhalwani, Kim, Dhavlas, Kurduvadi. Varsinghe, Mada, Vaka, Vangar, Malipen, Mohal, Mundevadi, Pakni, Bale, Solapur. Solapur is 454 kilometers, 455, 454 kilometers from Mumbai. After that, we have Tikekarwadi, Hodgi, Tilati, Akalkot, Nagansur, Boroti, Dudhni. Dudhni is where the Maharashtra border ends and the Karnataka border starts. After the Dudhni, you have Kulali, Gorgaon, Gangapur Road, Savalgi, Bablat, Gulbarga. Gulbarga is 563 kilometers from Mumbai. After Gulbarga, you have Hiranandaru, Marthur, Shahabad, Wadi. Wadi is 605 kilometers from Mumbai. After that, the Central Railway ends and you have South Central Railway. The book only had that much stations and I only buy it at that much. So, so I think it requires a <laughs> round of applause. Oh my God, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, this is amazing. I just wanted to do this because, you know, I just wanted to, for people to realize that, you know, Chitra is also about, you know, keeping a photographic memory as well. And I think some people also talk about some of those things. In today's times, many people are interested. And this is one thing I've, whenever I see some prominent planets in Chitra, I always make this statement and you can, you, you can use and this Dr. Pai, this I should say, you yeah. said, uh, I said I, in the beginning of the talk that uh, uh, I, I have, do I have anything in Chitra mm -hmm. and in my D1, I don't have anything in Chitra. But then I looked into, in my divisional chart of D9, I have two key planets in Chitra. So, so you that are makes sense, off. isn't it? <laughs> so yeah. when we're doing this, we said, oh, do you have anything in Chitra? He says, no, I don't have anything in D1. So I said, look at your divisional chart. You definitely should have. Because, you know, D9 is very key. And if you have prominent plans in Chitra, that's... Okay, here is the final point I wanted to make before Bharat can, uh, you know, take over and start his discussion. Is this is... Every time I've made this statement to anybody who has a prominent Chitra, it's always come true. Okay? maybe nine out of 10 times. It's a simple statement I always ask them, is if they have a prominent planet in Chitra, when I say prominent, if I see the sun, the moon, the Lagna, the Lord of the Lagna, and sometimes even the Mahadasha Lord, which is there, or you know, if, it, if they're running through the Mahadasha of Mars and I see some planet there, I always ask them, are you very, uh, are you very, cautious about or, or rather are you do you pay a lot of attention to detail at home you know how the the house is kept and every time i ask them that they have this tendency that they, their pictures kept you know photographs or frames kept even if you tilt that by three degrees right when they enter the room they will notice that and they will go and change it again to that 
because they cannot even if the furniture in the house you know if it is moved they don't like it that that is you know that is about aesthetics they're very much engrossed with that and you can see they can eat, some people can freak out as well you know or even on their table they would like to have their table to be very organized i've seen many of them you know again depends on what is aspecting that planet in change. yeah it's more or it's like no you get irritated either you keep it irritated. properly don't keep it yes keep yes. it properly or don't so, keep it yeah even on the table if you jo- if if they kept it in a particular way and you go and you know you you know disturb the arrangement then they freak out again vichitra okay there might be people who again you'll have to see what planets are aspecting it you know that also has a different thing but i have generally seen and i've always got 9 out of 10 times people always say this and there is another very famous thing i always mention is about them i look at the karakatwa or the planet which is sitting in chitra and i say there is this relative or even the lordship for example you know if if it's the fourth lord which is sitting there then i say is the mother or if the moon is there because the karakatwa or the significator is the moon is the mother so i ask whether they have a tendency to get up between 3:30 and 4:30 okay invariably maybe to just go to the toilet or go to have a glass of water or whatever and i've got 8 out of 10 times when i have asked if said yes and i've also nailed down sometimes if i've seen a venus there i've said you know this person always used to say you know i i'm always i wake up between that hour between 3:30 and 4:30 i asked him what do you have there he said i have my venus okay and i know that this guy um, was not married so i asked him is it your you know girlfriend or somebody who calls you he said how did you know he was like completely baffled my golf girlfriend calls me around that hour and she just wants you know check on me or whatever talk to me around that hour so because venus was there anyway i think as we go along uh, there will be more discussions on this and what is the logic behind 330 and 430 i think maybe santip or you know aditya or bharat can also discuss about that so bharat ji i think you know you can take over from here please share your insights on uh, chitra nakshatra really okay so arjun bhai ji and bharam ji um just leave your screen is only take one second but i was going to say about the moving the picture frame or moving something in the house you know there's a really good point with chitra that's usually always accurate and what i find is it's about the flow more than the aesthetic aesthetic it's about the flow of the home they're very specific about the energy flow in the home which brings in like vastu um you know sacred geometry which is yantra you know sacred shape so they'll have everything positioned in their home um it, it creates a certain kind of flow to them energetically yeah so i just wanted to add that cuz i've seen the same thing It's, it's a beautiful point yes colors. yes colors is what very yeah they're very specific about the colors the way the colors will go together everything yeah shapes yeah okay beautiful thank you, thank you yes but it okay so i'll begin my short presentation on chitra which is called chitra applique applique is the art of decorating a large piece of fabric by applying smaller pieces of fabric on the large piece and depending upon on which part of the large piece of fabric you place the smaller fabrics it forms a pattern so you can change the pattern by placing the small fabrics differently on the large piece of fabric similarly uh, where chitra nakshatra is placed in your chart which house chitra nakshatra is placed in your chart will decide what kind of effect chitra nakshatra uh, what kind of effect chitra nakshatra gives in your chart is my audio clear yeah yes it's clear yeah. it's clear bro okay okay so uh, i will begin with the legend of chitra nakshatra you see when the when the devas and the asuras were fighting a lot of asuras used to get killed in the battle but since guru Shuk- shukracharya who was the guru of the asuras knew the sanjeevni vidya or the method of bringing people or b- method of bringing uh, living beings back to life 
all the asuras who were killed by the devas were brought back to life by guru shukracharya through his sanjeevni vidya and the devas did not know how to tackle the situation so the devas sent the son of jupiter who was called kasa or kacha as you you may prefer to guru shukracharya to learn the art of sanjeevni vidya when the son of jupiter went to guru shukracharya to learn the art of sanjeevni vidya of course guru shukracharya would not teach all this directly so kasa had to really spend time in the ashram serving guru shukracharya and during this during his stay in the ashram uh, devyani who was the daughter of guru shukracharya fell in love with kasa but the asuras did not like this entire thing at all so the asuras killed him but every time the asuras killed him devyani would ask her father to resurrect kasa so this process went on and on and then finally the asuras thought of a plan they killed kasa and the mixed the ashes of kasha kasa in a drink which guru shukracharya consumed unknowingly now when devyani requested his, her father to resurrect kasa this could not be done because kasa was in the stomach of guru shukracharya and the only way kasa could come out of shukracharya stomach was to kill shukracharya uh, and come out of his stomach so this was not a option which was feasible but since devyani was so distraught with the death of kasa that she told her father that you have to somehow bring kasa back to life so then it was then that guru shukracharya realized that the only way he could please his daughter was by teaching kasa the sanjeevni vidya so he taught kasa who was in the stomach of guru shukracharya he taught him the sanjeevni vidya after learning the sanjeevni vidya he cut open guru shukracharya stomach and came out of the stomach and then used the sanjeevni vidya which he learned while he was in the stomach and brought back guru shukracharya to life so it was the asuras who unwittingly enabled kasa to learn the sanjeevni vidya after learning sanjeevni vidya which was the main aim of kasa he left the ashram but devyani was very upset that kasa was leaving the ashram so she created seven mountains to stop kasa from leaving and then kasa was trapped between these seven mountains he could not leave the ashram and then kasa's father which is jupiter prayed to lord narayana which is vishnu to rescue kasa and then lord narayan sent his discus which is his chakra talwar to rescue uh, kasa from the grips of the asuras and later uh, vishnu gave his darshan to uh, jupiter on a chitra nakshatra day on his highly decorated chariot which is why chitra nakshatra natives should always pray to jupiter jupiter is a very significant planet even though the lord of chitra nakshatra is mars chitra nakshatra natives benefit if they pray to lord jupiter and of course there is the jupiter nakshatra temple in the madurai district of tamil nadu which is the only chitra nakshatra temple in india which is dedicated to chitra nakshatra and for those who are interested in uh, performing an abhishekam those chitra nakshatra natives who are interested in performing an abhishekam uh, for uh, guru bhagwan Uh, they could uh, do an abhishekam on a chitra nakshatra day, day and this abhishekam cost 3600 indian rupees and those who would like to do this the bank details uh, for remitting the money is all given here the name of the temple administrator is also given here for those who may be interested i will just cover some key traits of chitra nakshatra natives number 1 chitra nakshatra natives keep to themselves they don't mix easily with others they like traveling and they do not stay in the place they were born and they are very courageous they are so courageous they even love their enemies they are extremely good at keeping secrets which dr pai mentioned in his introduction because it is linked to chitragupta who is the keeper of all our activities and chitra nakshatra natives need to tame the tiger you know they need to tame the tiger within themselves if they wish to progress spiritually and chitra women do not get along well with their father 
also chitra nakshatra natives could end up destroying their own creation chitra nakshatra natives have a have the foot in the mouth disease that is they speak first and then think later and they get along well with others by agreeing to the other point of view and one important thing about a chitra nakshatra is that the the house of a chitra nakshatra is ultimately sold or destroyed now where is chitra nakshatra in your chart if chitra nakshatra is on the mercury side then you may be a in or an architect you may even be a you may be a, a creative accountant if you have chitra nakshatra as the first house on the mercury side but if chitra nakshatra is on the venus side because two padas are in the venus side you may still be creative but you may have an eye on aesthetics and a chitra nakshatra native is very uh, good looking whether it's pretty or handsome or whatever and a chitra nakshatra native will make you will will always stand out in a crowd chitra nakshatra in the second house will make you a good speaker and you may know creative ways of making you may know creative ways of making money and particularly money from jewelry if you have chitra as a third house then you could be a writer of short stories stories which have an unexpected twist in the end you could be a teacher of dance you could be a teacher uh, you could uh, you could teach singing or you could be a teacher of voice modulation you may be even a director of films if chitra is in your fourth house you may not live in the house you own your house may be sold or demolished for one reason or another or you may demolish a house to build another if chitra is in the fifth house you may use moral authority rather than administrative authority and you may be a designer of course material you may be a designer of educational resources or you may be a designer of the cover of books if chitra is in the sixth house you could be a military or marketing strategist or you could be a creator of a well crafted debt fund or you could be an expert in savings strategies if chitra is in the seventh house then you could be the author of kama sutra okay so the author of kama sutra had perhaps perhaps had chitra in his seventh house if you have chitra in the eighth house you could be an author of a who done it novel or you could be a creative seller of life insurance and you could be someone who's not averse to trying out bdsm or bondage i'm not going to expand that further if chitra nakshatra is in the ninth house you could be good at enlisting members into a spiritual or religious organization if you have chitra in the 10th house then you could be a designer of agricultural tools you could be a creative framer of commercial standard operating procedures or you could be a creative teacher if you have chitra in the 11th house you could be working as a designer in a jewelry company or you could be known as a creative chef or an unusual painter if you have chitra in the 12th house then perhaps you are qualified enough to carry forward the work of william masters and virginia johnson who perhaps had chitra in the 12th house you could try carrying forward their legacy you could be someone who could think of creative ways to spend money or you could use your creativity to stop people from spending money how to deal with a chitra nakshatra if you know a chitra nakshatra try and take try taking interior designer advice from a chitra native in the absence of an interior designer be careful a chitra nakshatra native watches every move that you make without your finding this out a chitra native is obsessed with appearance obsessed with structure and obsessed with form so if you have an important presentation run it through a chitra nakshatra native for inputs on style and the design of presentation a chitra nakshatra native is highly intuitive and prophetic so use chitra nakshatra native as a sounding board for your gut feel do you need a nanny or a private tutor for your child 
get a chitra nakshatra native to mould your child. So this is what I have on chitra nakshatra. Thank you very much. Excellent, 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 excellent uh, presentation, Bharat. Thank you. And there were there were some very very good points which uh, you made, and I also wanted to. Um, you know, I was talking, I was just thinking about uh, the different names of uh, Chitra Nakshatra. And one of the names which came to my mind was this Nakshatra was also called as Arista. Have you heard of this word Arista? Okay, Chitra was also called as Arista or it is, uh, there is another name for it as uh, Alara. I think it's an Arabic name for the star, uh, Beta Virginis. And Spica or Spica is Alpha. Virginus, I guess. I think Aditya will be talking about that. But what is Arista? Arista is a Sanskrit word which means ill luck, you know, misfortune. Or rather, they say um, it's it's a kind of a uh, it's a kind of a bird as well, right? I can't remember, but that is a kind of a bird, or it's also a bandage you know, that you cover when you get injured. What, whatever is damaged has to be covered. So Chitra is all about <clears throat> camouflaging. And you mentioned about people pulling down their houses or, you know, that's because of Vishwakarma, because he was so engrossed with his own creation that uh, he was, he, him, he sacrificed himself, his body for the creation. <laughs> so you can see a lot of people get so engrossed with their, their, their work and sometimes too much of work can bring, you know, Arista. Arista is disastrous, Arista means, or ill luck. Or, but let, let us not forget, the Shakti of this Nakshatra is called as Chayana Shakti. Chayani. Chayani Shakti is to bring all the merits of your past, you know, merits of your past life. So very strong correlation, this Nakshatra can be used very brilliantly to activate your karmas, you know, the past life karmas. Any planets which are sitting there, I feel they, they, act, they, they kind of operate on trying to clear out many of their karmas, you know, or they bring uh, good luck to them. It's not about ill luck, but it brings good luck to them from their past merits. So I've seen a lot of pattern makers. This is something that I want to talk about archetypes, initiators of archetypes, and also pattern makers. These people can really think in terms of patterns. You know, mathematicians I've seen, you know, designers and all of these people, they can create an image in their mind and they can see it's like, um, what's this, uh, what's the great uh, <clears throat> Tesla, Nikola Tesla, right? Now, it will be interesting for me, I don't know whether he has any planet in Chitra, it will be interesting to see. Um, but what I know about Tesla is Tesla, Tesla used to uh, have the entire machine that he has designed in his mind and he used to actually run the machine in his mind and he can actually see which part of the machine is going to um, wear out very quickly. So he used to engineer things and he could really see the entire thing working in his mind and he knew, he knew exactly how things were going to operate. And that, that, that way he brought innovation. So Chitra are the people who can really think out and plan out things very, very beautifully. And Chitra is also the blueprint, I feel. It's kind of a blueprint that you, you know. And like Eve was mentioning, it's all about the flow. They have to go with the flow. That's very important for them because they are craftsmen, they are architects, they're sculpt sculptors. So you can see all of that. So beautiful. I think um, excellent presentation. I, I have a quick question for Bharatji. Sure. So you said Bharatji, the Chitra natives will have problem with the father. Uh, hmm. Relate that with the Devani story or because the son, when it comes to Chitra, it's in the Libra side, still not at the debilitation point, but Hmm. But uh, how 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 can you relate that? that yeah, I'll tell you. Th there is this uh, mythology. Chitrangada. Where, yeah, Chitrangada. You know, Sh Chitrangada fell in love with somebody when she was crossing a river or something like that, 
and um, she went back and told her father that you know she wants to marry this man who she does not know and her father got very upset with this thought process of his daughter so uh, that is why it is said that you know chitra natives especially the women chitra don't get along well with their fathers okay yeah it's it's a good point bharat ji because it's king surat i think that was his name hmm. king surat who actually fell in i mean she was playing with her friends by the river or whatever like a pond or something a water body and she fell in love with this guy who was a model oh it was and, not vishwakarma's uh, daughter is it it was not vishwakarma's daughter was was vishwakarma's daughter exactly chitrangada you're right i think we have uh bharat ramji uh, can you guys hear me can yes, you guys go ahead, yeah. can you so, go ahead. first yeah. of all bharat ramji i just wanted to say once again brilliant on um, many of those points i was just kind of chuckling cuz yeah that a lot of those were spot on um about the father um that is something that i have seen whether the person has it in the d1 or the d9 i have seen um you know it's not in every case but there is definitely strain with the father and it becomes more specific with certain grahas there like um you know it's interesting is rahu there i've seen that a few times um i've seen that with rahu there a few times i've seen it with venus not always though um there has to be other factors going on but i i've noticed specific grahas there actually do create a problem with the father and um i can talk about this later once aditya ji does his thing but i i think there's a, a many reasons behind this um So yeah, thank you, Bharat Ramji. It's just beautiful. Thank you. There's a, there's another theme also. I have seen and just on the same lines of the mythology, and th this again, if uh, you know, like Ichi mentioned, this cannot be generalized. You know, you really have to know what planets are sitting there, and what planets are activating it. I've also seen the theme, the larger theme, of uh, the daughter of a Chitra person. the chitra's daughter i'm talking about daughter not about son chitra's daughter's boyfriend would cheat on them this is another theme that i've seen it might not be in all the cases but i've also seen that the the boyfriends of the daughter is what the the father doesn't usually like or there is some disagreement or about uh, the choice of the of, of the boy that the girl has it's exactly also always with the daughters for a chitra native who has a prominent planet there okay but it 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 is not i'm not trying to generalize but there have to be other combinations in the chart which should also promise that right it's not one swallow which makes a summer so please don't jump to any conclusion and because jyotish is not about one planet and one nakshatra it's a holistic thing you have to look at all the but i've seen this theme also playing out like the the daughter's boyfriend cheat or have unhappy relationship or multiple relationships yes uh, santeep you wanted to say something yeah dr pai you mentioned tesla i mean he's like a perfect example for chitra you know a visual mind a visual yes. uh, you know uh, genius really and he actually has mars and ketu in chitra in on the virgo wow. side yeah that's wow. very interesting beautiful uh, very i strong. didn't know it just came to my mind about tesla the only thing i know is i think he has saturn in artha that is what i remember from memory but right. if you know how a, a native's life you can actually see and you can probably also sometimes tell i, I am i correct he has saturn in artha yeah you are right definitely saturn in artha yeah. pisces uh, revati ascendant so but yeah, yeah it's very um, all the planets most of the planets in the mutable signs but uh, yes and chitra and uh, hasta Yeah. and chitra let us say chitra and revati uh, they are nadu nakshatras so nikola tesla was a very soft natured guy very humble very you know even though he had so many patents to his name he was never you know the the person who will come and post or show if there was no showmanship he was really a person who used to work for 18 hours a day you know great great uh, you know nikola tesla this is what okay but that's thank, thanks for confirming uh, he has mars and ketu there 
and yeah, sure, Chetu. sure, Doctor Pai. Yeah. I think K, uh, maybe Eve Ji would like to share later on about Ketu in Chitra. She's going to share about that. So I think I'll look forward for her description. So I think let's go with uh, Aditya Ji. You know, please. Uh, yeah. Great. Share whatever Thanks. you. Thanks, Bharat Ramji. Thanks for thanks for that. It was really the mythological stories. I loved. I love hearing stories. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> okay, I'll share my screen. And when he's just sharing, what I wanted to say is another point before I forget. Is yes, I've seen Chitra natives. I can ask the panelists to confirm, or maybe if they've seen. They usually will fight a very powerful opponent in their life. Sorry, powerful? Chitra. Opponent. Opponent. Oh, yeah, yeah opponent. court cases, court cases. Court cases, battle, yes. Uh, yes. Odd, odd competition. Yeah. Um, odd True. problems, uh, strange problems with other people. Strange problems with other people. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I was just trying to see the reason, maybe mythologically, you know, we can probably... Uh, describe this more is because Vishwakarma had uh, a struggle with Indra, isn't it? Vrittasur, his creation. Vrittasur was his creation of Vishwakarma. He had to really have a, a, you know, a duel with Indra, the king of the gods. Well, a lot of stories with Vishwakarma, he has problems with his own creations. Yes. <laughs> so the Very things good. that he, he designs often, he, you'll see this with Chitra people too. They will destroy, like you said, their maybe their art or their music or their um, maybe their their discovery. Um, <laughs> if scientist, they may doubt it. They may go back on it. You know, they're the ones that are going to go through a process of severe perfectionism. Um, I've seen this over and over. Uh, the other thing. <clears throat> now, can you guys hear me? Okay, because this computer yep. is flashing strange. Okay. Um, it's fine. Okay, um, but yeah, I, I've noticed with with Chitra, it can be, it's a very interesting balance for them because they have they have to be careful. Just like Rohini, I find that they can easily outshine other people too, and it does attract a lot of jealousy. Even uh, Tesla, in his field, he didn't want to. He was just being himself. He didn't think of that that but it attracted a lot of jealousy and possessiveness from the people who were funding him and a lot of complications. They're also often whistleblowers. So I love that um, Bharat Ramji had brought that point forward about speaking. There's something with trigger happy speech, but, um, but they also can keep secrets and they often find out about hidden things they'll, they'll they'll be in the right place at the right time to find out about very deep secrets and um i'll talk a little bit more about this at another uh, later but there's a big emphasis on this sign with doing the right thing and so when certain other nakshatra combinations come along with chitra these people are number one at whistleblowing yeah okay so i'll let aditya ji go excellent points Yuchi. and i also wanted to point out that tesla apparently if you read about him he used to carry a box a black box and he used to say he, he, you know he had some secrets in that box you know and it is believed that the american government after his death the first thing they did is confiscate that small box the black box they did they took everything. nobody knows everything yeah. They took everything from his apartment. Yeah, they took everything. Yeah, but they don't know what was there. What was he working on? He says, I'm working on something which is next generation technology. You know, maybe well, many you know of us he are... designed a spacecraft. Oh, did he? Yes, and okay. think about Vishwakarma. With Vishwakarma. The, 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 designing the flying crafts. So yeah, Tesla did de design a spacecraft. But, I mean, that might not have been what was there. I think it was probably something even deeper than that. Because that's, that's something that has been worked on by the government for a long time. So mm -hmm. it might have even It's a been, secret. Yes. It's very yes. secretive. Very secretive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yes, Dr. Toki, you can go ahead with uh, Chitra Nakshatra. 
Uh, you are on mute. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Sandeep. So from ground now to space. Okay. <coughs> so Chitra Nakshatra, which is also called as the spy cause, Pika star. <coughs> it is called as the star of opportunity. <coughs> so what I thought I was just like to show you like the Virgo constellation and uh, how does it look at this picture was taken on 30th September 2017 and this is the Virgo constellation I think uh, I don't know whether this is too much the blue here the blue line here is the outline of the Virgo constellation this one and right now in the Virgo constellation we have Mercury who just entered Virgo the sun, the sun is in Virgo, and the Jupiter, this is Jupiter. Out of all these stars, you know, this, 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 I think this star is the brightest, and this is the Chitra star. So this is the Chitra star, or the Spika star, or the Spika star. And you can see the Jupiter is so close to Chitra now. It's very close to it. In fact, few days back, it has crossed the Chitra star. This is the Chitra here. So this is a star. Okay. So there are three planets in Virgo, Mercury, Sun and Jupiter in Virgo and Jupiter is very close to the star Spica or Chitra. <clears throat> now, whenever I talk about Yogatara, I always like to talk about the stars and the Chitra as Dr. Pai mentioned, it ranges from 23 degree 20 minutes of Virgo till 6 degrees or 40 minutes of Libra. And uh, the Chitra, the Spica star, now you can see here, this is the same constellation but it's inverted to like 90 degrees, around 90 degrees tilted. So this is a star spica here, spica, alpha virginis. <clears throat> and if you calculate in the sidereal position of all the, like from Aries to uh, Pisces, at what degree the spica star falls is basically at Virgo 30 degrees or Libra zero degree. It's exactly halfway between Aries to Pisces. No? Aries to Virgo can be six signs and then Libra to uh, Pisces can be the next six signs. And Chitra star is exactly located at Virgo 30 degree or Libra zero degree. That's why some people use, you know, Chitra, what is that? Chitra, Chitra Paksha Inamsha. Now what is Chitra Paksha Inamsha? Because what is opposite, exactly opposite of Chitra is your Aries zero degree. That is the first point of Aries. Right now, we don't have any star, any bright star there. Now, the, if, even if you take Ashwini star, you have Hamal, which is at Aries 8 degree. So even though if you say the first point of Aries, there is no marking done or no specific location or no specific marker. What are markers for us? It's only stars. But here in this case, exactly opposite to the first point of Aries, which is the first point of Libra, you have a star here, Spica or Spica or Chitra. And that's why it's useful to use that as a, like a Chitra Paksha Ainamsha or some Ainamsha because you can see that, you can see the marker there. So that's why some people also use uh, Chitra Paksha Ainamsha and people prefer that. Okay. <clears throat> so any planets very close to Virgo 30 degree or Libra 0 degree around that range, plus minus 1 or 2 degrees can be error. Then... Uh, that real prominent Chitra qualities can be shown up. And I will show you some, some personalities having that and how Chitra has played an important role or in some, some important thing which you can see related to Chitra qualities in those natives and in their work. Now, how to find Chitra star is I always like to go and see outside. Doing astronomy for the first time, you go out and you see all the stars, you are confused what to do. The one technique to do is basically take some constellations which are very familiar to you and then you take that and then you build up saying that, okay, it's like, you no, know, you go on a, in a, on a, in a, in a, in a playground and then there's a tree. And if you want to show your friend some pointer sitting or some bird or something sitting on the one branch of a tree, very hidden on the background, what you say, you, the, your friend can't see it. Then what you, how you direct your friend to? What do you do? You say, okay, can you see that tree? The friend will say, yes. Can you see the trunk of the tree? The friend will say, yes. Can you see the fifth branch of the tree? 
Yes. Can you go to the left side of that? Yes. Can you go to the another three branches right to it? Yes. And then can you see the bird? Yes. So that's how you point and then you do it. Similarly, in astronomy, you have to do that even when I, when I was doing the same thing, even I was confused. But then what I did was I took the constellations which were very clear and from that I used to go through. And then you can identify stars and once you know the stars, then boom, then it's fine. Then you can remember it forever. No issues with that. But the initial learning, you have to do that. Similarly to find Chitra now in the sky, first, of course, this great big dipper is very easily identifiable. It's very easy to locate in the North Star because we know if you join these two, it goes to Polaris or the Pole Star. Pole Star, if they say, but it is very difficult to find. But the Big Dipper, you can clearly see the seven star systems towards the northern side. And then once you know this, it's very easy. Take this tail. You extend this tail directly. When you extend this tail, it will hit the star Arcturus, which is the Swati Nakshatra. This is a Swati. But then just continue with that. If you just continue with that, you will hit the star speaker. So that is just one star which is very bright. Once you continue with this tail of the Big Dipper, it will hit uh, Swati and then after the Arcturus and then after that it will hit the Spika star. So that's how, so in this process you learn what? You learned about the Big Dipper, you learned about the Arcturus, you learned about the Spika star. So that's how you, uh, we, uh, one needs to study astronomy, like when you do the star or um, uh, night sky study. And I always used to do that and this, then I used to sometimes then, in an Orion region, I will take the Orion belt and then I will join that belt to the Rohini, other belt to the Sirius star. So like that, you tend to uh, learn constellation by constellation and then you get the entire picture of the sky. So if anyone wants to see that, you should do that. Yeah. Yeah, add something here because I love I love this so much. I um I wanted to just add quickly that for those interested, meditating on the night sky during a new moon. Um, you'll notice immediately that a lot of the stars that the Rishis marked as Yogataras, they get bright. They, they, uh, the other stars will kind of zone out, especially if you're doing like an open eye meditation on the night sky and drink, kind of drink in the light through the eyes. Um, you'll notice that specifically Chitra, Chitra and Jupiter now being so close to uh, Chitra, it becomes almost like a sun. It'll become very bright. So I wanna, I just wanted to share that with the audience because I feel not enough of us actually go out and you know meditate on, let's say the moon. It's very hard to do that with the sun. It, it takes a select, you have to have proper breathing and um, all of that. You'll actually hurt yourself if you're not doing the, the right yogic practices. But the moon is gentle to us all. And um, so are the stars. And this is the, this is the mysteries behind, you know, Varuna, for instance, like uh, Sharabashaka, which is the astrologer star. I was actually just reading Uttara Kalam Rita last night, and they mentioned Sharabashaka as the astrologer's sign. And you think of that, that's all the night, that's all the stars, that's the night sky. So um, I just wanted to share that while you have this beautiful screen, because these stars actually pop out. They'll actually come out. The light will come out at you. Yeah. No, and during a new moon, new moon time, all this sky is very dark, and you can see all the stars very clearly and um, bright. So, and this is also very interesting. <clears throat> the Saptarishi one. No, as we said, these two stars are marker. If you extend it, it will go to Polaris. If you extend it in the other direction, it will go to Leo. So this. Wow. Yeah, it's like uh, Saptarishis are very good to identify location of stars. I actually, you can you can you can calculate you can find the position of all these constellations and Rashi is very easily. So and Aditya, I wanted to add one more point to what Yuji had mentioned. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. She mentioned about uh, this yoga taras, mm -hmm. and I would be very keen on uh, you know for people to pay attention to at least three nakshatras which are made of only one, one star. You have to remember this. There are only three nakshatras which have one star and that is the constellation that they form. You know? So one is Ardra nakshatra, which is just one star in it, that is Bitu juice. The second is Spika or Spika, which is in Chitra nakshatra. And the third is Arcturus, which is Swati nakshatra. Right? So that could be something very key, I suspect, 
with these nakshatras because they become very unique because there's only one star, right? This, they, they are all yogatharas. So the, the individuals who have important planets there can become very unique in their uh, the skill that they have or the talent that they have. They would be very, very profound or they might be, uh, you know, experts, yeah. you know, uh, with that. And that's what Chitra is. Chitra, many people say, very charismatic, very charming people, you know. And one more thing I wanted to point out, I want to ask the panelists. Now, this is just a, uh, an observation I had. Now, whenever Jupiter is transiting Spica, did you ever notice that your, you know, the around your hip, you start putting on weight? Because Spica is said to be the, the, the hip of the maiden. Is that correct? Aditya ji, yeah. the hip of the maiden. Yeah, That's what they said. Yeah. So the hip. So when you have a very expansive planet which comes very close to the Yogatara, I have been observing that you put on weight around the waist. Yeah. <laughs> have you, I, have you, I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe people have been losing weight, but I'm saying it's very difficult to get rid of uh, you know, the fat accumulation around your waist. You know, that's very I, know, I just checked. I went to the doctor the other day and my weight is now five pounds more, five to seven pounds. I don't know because of clothes it was or what it was, I don't know. So I, <laughs> I saw it's all your snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't blame the don't, like, don't blame the clothes don't blame yeah. Maybe don't, <laughs> I think, don't blame I think, Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just the clothes. I am happy, but I don't know. It was like, oh my god, because you know, I have to check my I'm a diabetic, so I have to check always all this weight and all. I said, oh my, I have more, two more exercises. <laughs> I don't know. And so that's, so, I don't know, because of that or what it was. But so it's a star of opportunity now, you know. So you have to really <laughs> be on. <laughs> and you're saying you're blaming it on the clothes, not on. <laughs> I have, I'm blaming it on the clothes. Blaming... <laughs> so no, I was shocked. Like, okay, but any, any, any observations what? around that? Like last two, three years never happened, but, but suddenly it happened. So I was like, oh my God, why, why is this like, you know, last two to three years, weight is almost constant and suddenly now it's like seven, eight pounds high. That is something weird. So, and I'm, I'm my usual, I'm not <laughs> changing lifestyle. <laughs> You've been yeah. eating the same thing. Hard to, yeah, hard to say, Dr. Pai. It's like, you know, it's one of those things we, we, we would prefer to blame it on the planets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I, used to do that. I don't know. It's like I don't know. Let's not talk over. It. Yeah, but uh, Doctor Pai, when Jupiter transited over Chitra, I noticed there was uh, at least for me. I wanted to eat a lot. That was there. definitely that I could say. Like uh, especially like when Jupiter transited in, over into Libra, when Venus is also the sweet thing. So like Jupiter and Venus, both, that I noticed for sure. I've seen like immediately other people around me also wanted to eat. So, so that's there. Well, Definitely some, something could be there. Yeah. Think about Jupiter being the storehouse. Like in, in Prashna Marga, all these charts, you know, I mean, uh, the places that Jupiter indicates, one of them is the storeroom. And in medical astrology, he's fat, which is the storage of the body. <laughs> so no. It makes perfect sense. He's the storage. He's yeah. again Chitra is like uh, Virgo and Libra, and Virgo and Libra. If you think Virgo is stomach and Libra, body, uh, yeah, waist region. Body. Yes. Yeah. Jupiter right now transiting that region. Um, Jupiter fat, so <clears throat> so fat around the stomach. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Don't worry. Maybe when Saturn comes, the fat will go away. Don't worry. <laughs> After thirty, yeah. after thirty years, yeah, after thirty years, no problem. Maybe, <laughs> maybe by that time, <laughs> maybe certain aspect will improve. Maybe, maybe yeah, when maybe, it moves maybe over. Yeah. Well, for Virgo Lagna, um, also that would be going over, right? The site of Virgo, and then going into the second house of Libra as well. Libra as well, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Because of this, it is called the arc to Arcturus and spike to Spica. These are famous words they use. You know, arc to Arcturus and then spike to Spica. So, and also sometimes Virgo, you know, the position you see how it is like, it's like the chair. They also call Virgo sometimes as a lady, but also the stars represent like a chair. This is like a chair, the base of the chair. 
this is the back side of the chair and then these are the two legs you know so that's why sometimes verb is also referred to as chair sitting chair but anyway let's enough of astronomy and let's go to uh, do you think uh, just a point uh, do you think uh, even the ergonomics of the chair that you're sitting can have an impact on chitra because you said uh, the chair so look at the hind legs so the spiker is actually the back yeah. legs yeah. of the the yes. chair that you're sitting on yes so can that have maybe i don't know i'm just thinking out loud here can be can be yeah i don't know i don't know and chair is also you know something when you say toshta it's like creation it's like something sculpting basically mm basically a chair interesting and it's a wooden 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 frame i think the wooden frames are also connected i don't know whether i said this in, in with, with mass things and all so sometimes i said this is this, this is another point i wanted to say you know people who are interested in um, you know the objects that are kept in the house so whenever i see whichever direction um of vastu based on you know the house and the alignment i always make this point in you know many a times i get that right you know i say a painted vessel or a painted vase or a you know vase or whatever would be there in the place wherever and the colors you know with multiple colored flowers in them you know vase and usually whenever i say that depending on where their the planets are in chitra in which uh, direction of the house they fall i usually get it bang on you know very it's usually there i've seen it many a times many a times something very beautiful like a art piece or a, a sculpture or a usually a painted vessel or a painted pot Mm-hmm. is always seen in the area where the chitra is prominent in the direction anyway let's go on uh, aditya ji yes. yeah now i come to the the deity of uh, chitra nakshatra which is twashtar now twashtar and vishwakarma are both basically um, related but he says that twashtar is navel of the invisible vishwakarma now first of all vishwakarma and they say navel twashtar came from the navel of the invisible vishwakarma vishwakarma now navel first of all is also relating to the stomach region which is also vargo the hip region the stomach region and vishwakarma is they say invisible so the twashtar is like a visible form of the invisible vishwakarma so that's why both are related to each other and of course the qualities are same the architect and he is a clan of brigus Tostar is Shukra son because Shukra, the Venus, is coming from uh, the clan of Brigus, and Tostar is considered to be the uh, son of uh, Shukra. Now, sometimes they say invisible Vishwakarma, and sometimes they say Shukra. So that is like okay, that's dichotomy, but okay. And it was said that Tostar's daughter was Saranyu, who got married to Surya, and uh, from I think she gave birth to Yama and Yami, correct? that was the story which i read so basically then uh, tostas granddaughters becomes yama and yami then so that's how the whole family you can see and the other point was father of vishwarupa uh, was killed by as, as dr pai mentioned the story like and uh, ev ji also mentioned and even bharat ram ji mentioned about destroying their own creation is connected with the story of kanadri um, uh, aspect one quality of chitra and in chitra you have the story of vishwarupa was killed by indra and this was like uh, tostar was angry and then he created this uh, demon called vritasur and that's vritasur fought a battle with indra so you can see the fight between that's that the, the natives of chitra maybe not be that easy going there will be some fights there will be some disputes there are conflicts going in their life which can be clearly see, uh, seen with this uh, story of indra vishwarupa and vrta and all uh, now when i was looking into this chitra the word chitra na no, so i took maybe i st- stepping on sandeep's toe maybe now chitra comes from the word chitra and this was also explained by one of the video by krs kapil ji he was telling chitra har used to come now, chitra har is made up of two words chitra plus har chitra means picture and har means garland garland of pictures this was a very uh, interesting uh, uh, okay uh, the other point was what i found was i found in google like when chitra har used to be telecasted they said it used to be telecasted on a friday so again the friday you know the venus day and chitra it all makes sense 
so chitra har was nothing but uh, i think in 70s or 80s i don't know even now i don't know but used to be a collection of all bollywood songs new bollywood songs and it used to be coming in 90s i very well remember but i think they changed in 90s the timings was different i guess it was not on friday but as far i remember i used to go to tuition and my tuition teacher was interested in that so it will be from 7 pm to 9 pm and this chitra har will come at around 8 or 8:30 pm so she also wanted to see so she will say okay let's take a break and let's see tv some songs so we, i was happy because uh, who wants to study okay now it's time for uh, looking for songs so i remember that it was on a week day but uh, but that was on a week day i feel that would have been a wednesday but i am not sure people can comment on this it may be either on tuesday or wednesday also i don't know or it may be friday uh, i'm not i'm not remember but wednesday makes sense because chitra is also half is in virgo and half is in uh, uh, libra virgo is owned by mercury libra is owned by venus so definitely it first used to come on fridays but they later they must have extended to even wednesdays or so so it was a collection of new bollywood movie songs and then later came in 80s came rangoli you know it, it, that used to be on sunday mornings 7 o'clock or 7:30 or something like some 7 o'clock i used to get up my, uh, and uh, rangoli was a mix of even old and new bollywood songs so my father and all was interested to see old songs and i was interested to see new songs and entire family used to be there in rangoli but chitrahar was like new bollywood movie songs so it was new movies yeah so so it was a tv program that used to come in in indian indian television, television. yeah you, know, you only had one tv channel to watch <laughs> that was chitrahar in fridays and rangoli on sundays right yeah. so yeah so the like, interesting was they selected these days of friday or so i think definitely friday was there as per the in google what the information say but i don't know about wednesday it was there or not but i slightly guess there may be a wednesday too it's it's 1990 or 1991 i'm thinking about so it's almost like 27 years back so uh, not able to remember vividly of course so that was one aspect of chitra and the other as dr pai also mentioned chitra means also bright it is a 12th nakshatra and sometimes it's also depicted with lamp and a pearl so lamp pearl with twashta and twashta is artificer or as a shaper so you can see all the qualities of chitra bright maybe lamp lamp can be associated with chitra of course pearl can be associated with chitra and arti uh, twashta is what an architect or a shaper you know so it's like a sculpture there so anyone who's maybe drawing or sculpting maybe they have a prominent chitra maybe now this is what always i do and i see the qualities of chitra uh, nakshatra and uh, for any nakshatra as i said there are four padas in each nakshatra the first two padas comes in virgo rashi the next two padas comes in libra so i always divide this first pada this is rashi virgo nakshatra is chitra and the navamsha is leo the second pada the rashi is virgo then chitra the nakshatra is chitra and again the navamsha is virgo the third pada is libra because it has come in the libra sign nakshatra is chitra and the navamsha is also libra fourth pada is again libra chitra nakshatra and scorpio is the navamsha if you see the planets virgo is owned by mercury chitra is mars always leo is sun so the first pada is mercury mars sun so the first pada of chitra will be like the combinations of the mercurian martian and sun qualities similarly second pada is mercury mars mercury so if you see that is one interesting thing about chitra if second pada third pada and fourth pada you have in second pada you have mercury mercury two mercury is coming up so mercury qualities are dominant third pada venus qualities are dominant and the fourth pada mars qualities are dominant you can see two mars there in the fourth pada Yes, so second and third padas aditya are uh, vargottama second and third pada are yes vargottama, vargottama. because vargottama. they fall in the same correct yes second so that means second and third pada chitra is, and that's where the your yoga tara also lies because it is virgo 30 degree so exactly exactly between the second the junction of second and third pada is your yoga tara of chitra so pay attention to these padas where planets are and then make a combination of these like second pada more of mercurian maybe dr pai was saying mathematicians and all analysts they can be mostly in second pada maybe in third pada can be venusian quality so it's like architect or some designing or something like related to venus the fourth pada can jewelry the jewelry designers are very strongly connected to this venus part the okay. third and the fourth pada yes fourth pada will be martian so again so 
combination this way if you study rashi nakshatra nakshatra padas you get lot of clues and then probably that's one way of studying and i do that mostly but that's something i thought now i will talk when you talk about the yoga tara i will just mention that um, this is the chitra uh, uh, vargo rashi chitra star is here this is the ecliptic ecliptic is means the where the how the sun passes and you can see the position of sun here the sun just passes through the north of spika every year and the date is around 16th or 17th of october so people who have birthdays around october 16th or 17th will have their sun very close to the chitra star so they should see uh, qualities of uh, or maybe some sat sun qualities how sun is behaving and then related with chitra nakshatra qualities a sun is also father karak sun is also government so think about that and what the jobs they do how is their father how is their relation with their father what their father does maybe something common with chitra that is something to be is especially these dates of october 16th and 17th of every year if, if their birthdays fall on that because planets can pass through any time but we have a fixed date for sun and this is all sidereal i'm talking about okay this is all sidereal positions because right now if you see my first picture uh, this was taken on 30th september we have this so now the sun will pass through it will go through this and october 16 17 that is after two weeks from now it will be very close to chitra star so somewhere here this is the time it takes from year to year anyway so this is now other thing was what is chitra chitra is a mars nakshatra the planet ruler is mars now chitra connects virgo and uh, um, libra virgo is an earth sign libra is an air sign so all martian nakshatras connect this uh, uh, earth and air signs earth is below air is above and it's like the junction you know stratospheric mesospheric ionospheric what do they say so it's like a junction between the earth and the uh, space so chitra comes under that and that means what these people will be involved in basically to building connections like chitra nakshatra people will be like i don't know maybe eve ji can put more light on this building connection linking the two worlds they want to bring those uh, two things or showing some connections between uh, some today's knowledge and scientific knowledge both maybe that can be a very important like scientific knowledge connect with the maybe astrology and astronomy who knows <laughs> connecting between the uh, astronomy space science thing and the astrology thing connection so they are maybe into building connections linking the two worlds so any link maybe in company you can talk maybe if there is chitra and person in uh, some company they may be dealing with uh, the company and they are uh, what you say um call our co partners and all so something like that maybe eve ji can put light in uh, more light on that and because how i thought about this point was kn rao ji's chart and if you see his chart he has got three planets in chitra sun moon and venus and moon and venus at, is at 2 degree of libra and 3 degree of libra which is very 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 close to yoga tara of uh, the chitra spika star so maybe i the ev ji you have any observations with this yeah aditya ji i was just going to say um this is a beautiful horoscope uh to look at for chitra um first of all i usually don't use horoscopes of people who are living um out of respect um but i know that kn ralji is you know <laughs> he's i believe i believe he posted his own chart so i feel okay about it um but he you know think about the the big court case Mm, yeah i was going to say that yeah okay that he had to fight against the government yes. of india i mean this is the government and this is that um you'll notice with chitra that there is a, an a, the opponent often becomes the government it's very common and i'm just thinking of all the links here with the sun the karaka of the father the indicator of the father and the indicator of government um and so the father the the masculine uh structure uh becomes almost uh a, a, like a foe an enemy and the chitra person is always introducing a new structure of some sort um and so kn rauji he he i mean not only is he an engineer by profession i believe 
isn't he an engineer? Is he a city engineer? No, oh. he's a he's a civil servant. Civil servant. Civil he's servant. A civil, okay. Yeah, okay. in the accounts. If I, account, yeah, in the account. accounts department. Oh, Chitra Gupta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chitra Gupta. So, but um, I'm thinking even of Gandhi ji, who I also know had Chitra. Yes. Um, and you'll look at the charts of politicians or people that have gotten involved with the government that have gone up against them. It's always um, it's always this big clash. And um, one thing I can say about what you were saying about connecting two worlds. Now, Chitra, just like Korva Bhadrapada, in the Ashtotri Dasha system, the Dasha Lord for Porva Bhadrapada stays Jupiter. So that shows you how strongly Jupiter becomes for Porva Bhadrapada. Same thing with Chitra, we have Mars, double. So we have Mars in both cases of both nakshatras being the Dasha Lord for Ashtotri Dasha and Vimshotri Dasha. So when you think of Mars, you know, you naturally think of the engineer, the logician, um, but also the person who has to fight big battles. Um, and this is really where uh, Mars comes into that kind of conflict space, that conflict resolution space. And when you're talking about connecting two worlds, this is often a very friction creating thing for Chitra people. It's like their ideas may be ahead of what the current status is of, of everyone else's understanding. Or um, you, you were speaking about Tesla, for instance, mm -hmm. there was this friction that happened, like the creating of the pearl. Because with Rigashira and with Danishta, the other two um, nakshatras with the Dasha Lord being Mars, there's you don't see quite the same thing. With Chitra, you get this, it's always the gem is getting created in the pressure of the earth or the pearl is getting created in the irritation of the oyster. So it's, um, you know, with all of these people, you can see this theme where they're, the connection they're trying to make, um, people are not often ready for it. And it can be social renovation. Also, a lot of our well-known whistleblowers that I'm referring to um, uh, was a gentleman's name, Edward Snowden, um, and quite a few other ones. You'll see a lot of Mars nakshatras involved with these people. It's a theme, actually, and especially when Rahu comes involved, forget it. They, they don't keep their mouth shut. <laughs> so, but there, there's a reason for this, um, which you're going to get to later, Aditya Ji, which I'll talk about more, but you'll see even with these people, they're a little ahead of their time socially of what the government is ready for they're actually trying to push that forward and i'm thinking of kay and Rauji. um he was trying to bridge two worlds that are have become incompatible in our society these two worlds have become incompatible the world of astrology and occultism and government even though there's so many theories about government utilizing these things Right, the, about government utilizing astrology or looking, you know, secretly. But um, these two worlds, you know, do not come together naturally. I mean, even in school, you know, an astrologer has to write in the, the U.S. in their taxes. You're an entertainer. <laughs> you're an entertainer. Is that not sad? This, it's you're an entertainer. That's what you're written off as. Um, so these two forces are extremely incompatible and you can really see the Mars element coming into Chitra Nakshatra. Mars becomes, um, almost as the War, warrior, you know? Yeah, he really does. But also he has such an engineering mind, even people that get involved in the beauty industries, which Dr. Arjun Paiji was talking about, or people who get involved in Vastu or, um, sacred geometry those kinds of things, design, city planning, all of those things, even being a lawyer, it's all about strategy. It, even if you're, if you're going to beautify something, it's a creating an illusion. And so you also get, uh, what do you, uh, jadu, like magic. <laughs> you get magic here. You get the, the ability to, to pull the veil of illusion. But it is all, everything Chitra deals with strategy. Everything. Yeah, it's a Mars. So Mars is yeah. probably a strategist. Yes, absolutely. So I'll let you continue and share your yeah. So that was after this. I was thinking, okay, Chitra also means painting. So painters. So which painters come 
come in the mind of everyone most famous van van gogh vincent van gogh picasso uh i thought about da vinci <laughs> okay great okay. oh man you have once again very technical he was very technical yeah da vinci was like i was not knowing i was i was asking to my roommate yesterday hey, which is the best painter you think of he said okay da vinci okay i said maybe da vinci painting yeah may chitra painters so i just looked into uh, look at that mars yes mars and you see Ch- saturn his uh, saturn is in 28 degrees of virgo chitra yeah and the yog tantra right yeah, i never got this it was uh, actually when i went to the astro data bank i got that uh, chart of uh, a western chart you know astro data bank has got a western chart so i have to convert wow. everything i have to do that and i don't have any software and all and i did all because he was born in 1452 so that means i have to consider that uh, uh, ayanamshas are also different 71.66 degrees that ayanamsha changes so i have to correct everything for that and i came up with answer of 28 degrees chitra 28 degrees virgo and i think we have this oleg correct i told oleg give me this chart man so he was able to generate and it came exactly at 28 2801 right? now guys another very common thing for artists and i've seen it over and over is kritika kritika oh. yes a malavya yoga in kritika you will see it over and over and over kritika uh cuz it's light yeah is vision it's light but this is such a powerful chart i'm even looking at the jeshta and the shot of a shaka cuz this man was involved in secret societies as well no, no. so and immediately i'm looking at candles and other things also i read about him so and this is a famous legacy combination to have jeshta and shot of a shaka in angles like that first fourth seventh tenth um it, this is classic you see elvis you see frank sinatra you'll you go down the list a very very successful people there's codes right astrology is a code he's got the classic mars is powerful saturn is powerful um he's got all the setup for it yeah <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, look at look at jupiter and moon you know all of you it's ah, in sarab sarab bishaka very yeah. very close to each other beautiful combination in the fourth house Oh, he's brilliant. He was a genius. So brilliant, yes. We were talking about in our class with Jupiter with the broad-minded intellect and the ability to store knowledge. That I mean he was he was known for his mind. Yeah. His skill which must be Mercury and isn't it funny? Look at Mercury. Yeah, he was but that when I just started with painting, okay. And who's painting? Da Vinci's painting. Okay, he should have something in uh, Chitra. And I was like disappointed because when I saw in the Western chart, it was like, okay, I don't want to go Libra something Libra fourteen fifteen degree. I said okay, then it makes sense of doing this, you know. Calculate. Well, just just isolating nakshatras because that's really what I do. Because yeah. I know the whole tropical sidereal thing. I can admit openly, I don't know the answer. No. I'm ignorant. I don't know yeah, the Yeah, but uh, Aditya ji actually I'm actually curious about the birth time, you know? I mean, <laughs> how would you verify Da Vinci's birth time? Yeah, so I actually know, tried to find his chart. But we well, don't know what he did have his chart. He had his chart available. He was an astrologer. He I mean, he knew his astro- he had his I know at one time I had seen years ago his western chart. Mm-hmm. It might be his right chart yeah, either way. The rodent rating is double A, so I feel uh, reliable. I think he had yeah. documented his because he that was his nature. He was into occult sciences as well as modern science. And yeah. no, I thought about that about time, but anyway, even if we don't know the time. But looking at Chitra, Chitra, yeah. Looking at Chitra, what do we have here? We have um, in Prashna astrology. What is the most powerful house? The eleventh house. Yeah. the 11th lord in the 11th house see how is he using he's using saturn who is the lord of third and fourth house uh, no third and fourth third house hand you know hand in, in the 11th <laughs> so that means you know saturn was the only graha that was visible at his time of birth venus wow. might have been setting you could probably see venus setting over the uh, western horizon but shani he was at his time of birth he was receiving the direct light of shani and spika, spika a chitra yeah. so he at his time of birth he was receiving that that light and that pran yeah. that prana directly from those that graha and that yogatara the other thing is never underestimate estimate mercury 
in Ravati nakshatra or Uttarabhadrapada nakshatra because those two nakshatras are abstract thought. And Pisces is abstract thought. And why would Mercury be debilitated in Pisces? It's not because it makes someone less intelligent. Actually, it makes someone bend the rules. Mercury's all about rules. So it makes someone bend the rules to abstract thought. They won't obey, like they won't follow step A, step B, step C. They'll actually look at Einstein too, even though he had a niche Bhangra Yoga, but you look at this and you realize that, you know, Ravati has that great ability to think outside of the box and to be um, intelligent and abstract thought. So this is actually a brilliant horoscope. Yeah. I mean, immediately, even at first, I don't even need to see, I can calculate the Navamsha, but it's even just glancing at this horoscope. It's beautiful. So yeah, I just thought to bring you, know, it's, uh, I think we are talking about Chitra, so why not? <laughs> right. It's beautiful. Finally, yeah, festivals, my great, my, my all-time favorite is festivals. So what festival, as I said, October 15th, 16th is the time when sun passes through Chitra. And uh, whenever the sun transits Chitra, it's the mid-October. It's the Vijaya Dashmi, correct? The Vijaya Dashmi. Right now, yesterday only we celebrated the Vijaya Dashmi. Now, how I connect this to Chitra, you know, you have these weapons. Uh, you see this artillery, the Vishwakarma, the weapons. And you see how the Durga, uh, Durga Ma, she's having all the weapons in hand. You can, and what do we do? We make pandals, you know, we make that um, uh, decorations and all. If you, if you especially go in uh, Calcutta, Kolkata, India, in the eastern part, they make beautiful pandals and they make beautiful uh, decorations and all for, for this Durga Puja. Now, what is pandal or Durga Puja? Why they make such beautiful? Because again, it's Chitra. It's the beautiful. It's the colorful. It's, it's, it's a designing, you know, all the Chitra qualities. I think that's when the sun transits Chitra. People get a lot of energy of making uh, some beautifying or some designing or something. So that's why a lot of pandals. Similarly, with uh, uh, see the beautiful Ravan here. He's colorful here. I don't know. He has got red color face and green color hand. I don't know. All colorful Ravan we have. Again, you know, they burn Ravan during that at that time. Uh, Ra Ravan Dehan, they call it. And a lot of weapons. Durgaji has got 10 hands and 10 hands got each. I think even Vishwakarma, someone created. Uh, he gave him some, gave him some weapon, I guess. I don't know the exact story of, because everyone when Durga was born or when they were with the forces of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahe, she was given weapons by each and every god. I think the Yama gave him the noose, and someone gave him the Trishul. Someone gave, so I, there is a list of that, but I don't remember. But I think Vishwakarma also gave something to her, like so that she can go and fight with Mahishasura. So you can see the qualities of Chitra. You can see the, how people make beautiful decorations, beautiful pandals and all those. And fights. Uh, Chitra, we were talking about fights. What is Dasara? Ram killing Ravan, Durga, <laughs> Durga ji killing Mahisha. So all fights happening. Aditya ji, this is amazing. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the desire for, um, for Chitra to make wonderful children, to have splendid children. And, and Durga was created out of all the powers of the gods. She was yes, the child. Yes. And the other thing about this is that if you read the thousand and eight names of Mother Durga or Mother Mahakali, you know, either way, you will hear Chitra uh, throughout numerous of her names. Other nakshatras are mentioned, mm -hmm. but Chitra has full verses. And of course, Chitra means, you know, various things in Sanskrit. So you can't say, oh, they're only referring to Chitra nakshatra. But at one point in the names that Chitra nakshatra is mentioned. Okay. So, yeah. That's nice. And then, okay, I just, okay, there's one more. I was just, I just typed Spica in Google. And all I learned about all this Spica, they had all this, both American ships, USS Spica and USNS Spica, uh, were <coughs> named after the star, you know, Spica star. So, USS ships, American ships, they were like a Carter class cargo. Cargo is what? Taking materials and coming out. Libra. I know all Libra star we can think of. A blue star represents speak on the flag of the Brazilian state of Para. Maybe I don't know if a Brazilian has got something to do with Spica. Maybe. A South Korean girl group. Girl. Again, Virgo. Chitra is in Virgo. So all qualities of you, you will see here. Spica is a vocalite song sung by Hatsune Miku. Now song. Again, Venus. Chitra. In a non-canonical chapter, you are starting life in another world. Um, another world. So it's like connection again, I think. 
So you can relate all those. Spica is a pseudonym of the Lily in the children's manga series. Again, children, when Eevee, you just mentioned about the children word, beautiful creating, and I have that point in next slide too. In his uh, last point is in his three book of occult philosophy, Cornelius Agrippa attributes Spica's cabalistic symbol. So again, they are related to occult. Sometimes that is also one thing seen with Chitra natives bend towards occult and other things. So cabalistic symbol. So I just typed Spica, all this came up and I was just very easily to identify me as connection with some Virgo or Libra signs and how it is. That was amazing. And finally, uh, I have, I guess my last slide is this. The foundation above is law, foundation below is truth and desire is to have wonderful children as Ibji just mentioned about Durga, you know, how, how everyone came and made this beautiful child called Durga who later went and killed Maisha so. Shakti is the Punya Chinese Shakti is to accumulate good karma, merit in life and the result of this Shakti based and desire is to gain honor in one's work. I won't go into all these details I, and I, this is my last slide and from here on I think Ibji can pick up and then she can elaborate more on these points. So. Yeah, I think we just leave this slide because I think it's wonderful and I think in many ways it sums up a lot about Chitra because, you know, whenever you're looking at a horoscope, there are numerous parts to it. You can't always separate. It's like a machine. Speaking of Chitra, you can't just take the engine out and say that's the aeroplane, right? You can't just, you, you have to have every part for something to work properly and how each individual has a certain code of a law of karma that they're imprinted with this individual and you can really see this expressed through the sign of chitra um, that chitra is that blueprint of karma and we look at the foundation above is the law Right? And I almost envision a tree. But law again, you know, you know that law, Libra, scales, we always relate to that fair justice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so law, Libra. But Libra also is more the scales of the economy often than it is the scales of justice. We don't realize that when you're actually reading horoscopes and you see, you'll see, you'll see Libra involved in justice, but you'll also hear a lot in the old Sanskrit about the economy. So it is also the scales of the marketplace. Um, I but also related when you said law, you know, I, as I showed in the Virgo that it's also called as a char. Chitra is the base, it's the center spot. Yes, yeah, center, and it's the center of the nakshatra, nakshatra wheel. Yes, yes. So this is where Venus is said to be debilitated. I'm only going off of nakshatras. I know a lot of people will argue and say, oh, you know, exaltation, debilitation is a Rashi thing. I don't know. I've practiced off of the uh, of, of nakshatras for years, and I feel that pers personally, my experience, like I said, I am an ignorant person. I'm not all knowing, but I will say that I get good results from just looking at the nakshatra and what the nakshatra is, and why would chitra um, not be so friendly to Venus? Okay, so. Uh, Venus being debilitated here is interesting because you would think that naturally Chitra would have a lot of qualities of Venus, right? Mm -hmm. But Chitra is at the middle of the path and Venus being the one that deals with vehicles, horses, cars, all those things that get us from point A to point B, and also the one that gives Samadhi or the final bliss. It's easily understandable that uh, Venus would not do very well trapped in the body. Chitra is a sign of the body, is a sign of the grand design, the law, the karmic imprint that got you this birth. It's the middle of the path. And so Venus, the liberating one, is very much trapped here. This is, there's a feeling of being trapped, but it doesn't, it's not bad. You'll see many beautiful, brilliant people with Venus in in Virgo or in, in Chitra, you, it, you can't look at it so black and white. It's silly, actually. It's very narrow-minded. So you can't say, really say that Virgo, Venus is debilitated at... Uh... I don't like these terms. I think they're getting taken out of context. If, you know, those of us who give readings, we have people come to us going, oh my God, in this divisional chart, these planets are debilitated. And debilitated sounds so terrible. <laughs> It sounds like, it just sounds like, and, and exalted sounds so, um, so excellent. Like, it, you know, it's going to do something excellent. And it's so misleading. So, um, but you can see why Venus 
from an esoteric view, from a deeper view where the Rishis were coming from. They were coming from a deep view. They were not coming from our world standards at all. So seeing where they're coming from, you know, Chitra would trap Venus. It's the most tamasic nakshatra. It is double tamasic. It has no slapic quality. It is trapped in the middle of the path. And so it's the soul trapped in the body. So who becomes trapped and who becomes Atmakarga in the Navamsha? Venus. Venus is natural Atmakarga for the Navamsha, and it's the natural graha that is most important in the Navamsha. So here you can see why Venus is trapped in law and truth. And so the roots of the tree you could see is the truth, the foundation below. So what feeds the law? What feeds the tree, the branches of the tree, and what bears fruit for the law is truth. So the foundation above and below being law and truth, and now you can really understand why you will see so many whistleblowers, people who once they learn the truth, they feel it's their responsibility and their, their order from the truth to share it with the public. And this is, this, Aditya Ji, this is definitely that Libra side again, because Libra is a sign of the masses, just like Aquarius is. Those two signs, the air signs, really deal with uh, humanity in different ways, in their own individual ways. That trine has a lot to do with people, humans. Think about it. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, they're not animals. There's no animal symbology. They're, they all have to do with the human world. So there is something about you know, this, the, the Libra portion of this sign that definitely deals with sharing the law and the truth with the public, with humanity, the natural seventh house. Now, the desire to produce wonderful children and the Shakti, which is the Punya Chayani Shakti, the power to accumulate good karma or merit in life, if you think about it, and to gain honor in one's work, all of these things put together, how does one gain real honor? How does one produce wonderful children? And what does this mean, wonderful children? It's not only limited to children that we give birth to, it's, it's creations. It's splendid creations. And when we follow the truth, we understand the law and the fruits that are born from it the children, the fruits that are born from it, are wonderful. They're splendid. They help society. They're upright. And this is the quality of Mars as well. Mars is the leader of the army of the gods, you know, or, or Kartikeya. He's connected with Kartikeya. So this is doing the right thing. So people with Chitra in their chart, they need to be very careful about the whole balance and I'm going to take this in further than it's not just economy. It's not just justice. It's true merit and demerit. Papa and Punya karmas. So when you're dealing with Chitra and you're at the middle of the path and you're trapped within the body, what is the right thing to do? It's always to weigh Way the right, you, you're always in that middle point, you're weighing and you're having to make the right decision that will benefit all. So bringing in children with intention here, bringing in children that will benefit society, not being careless with your sexual energy and just producing child after child, just because you can produce children, you know, or just because you can make weapons of mass destruction, should you? This is the question of Chitra Nakshatra. Should you give birth to destruction? Should you? That's the question. It doesn't mean yes or no. It means you need to weigh this. You need to under you need to have a deep understanding. And here you can really see the qualities of, you know, the the um, Yogatara being in Virgo, the analytics, the analytics here, the the actual decision making. And you think of Virgo as a very pure sign as well. It's a sign of um, a, a female, a young female, you know, before puberty, prepubescent, a Kanya, a young girl. And think about a child. Does, um, does a child want to, um, and thank you, Aditya Ji, beautiful. Um, yeah, it, does a child want to ever hurt an animal? 
Not usually. Not unless the child is abused. Usually when a child is abused and hurt by someone else, then they will hurt animals and things like that. Usually a child is curious about nature. Usually a child doesn't want to hurt the, you know, usually if a child is not in an abusive environment, the first thing, the child looks at life with wonder, right? Looks at everything with beauty. Everything is magical to a child. And a child doesn't want to destroy things. It's it's old humans. <laughs> it's, it's humans that want to do this, um, that, that get older, you know, it's, it, it, age warps consciousness. And that's why a lot of things they'll say that Saturn represents um, warped or perverted consciousness. Um, it's not that Saturn is that, but you can see that this, this whole element of preserving nature and preserving what's right and doing what's right comes into Chitra Nakshatra. Um, another thing that's interesting about ac accumulating or gaining honor in one's work, this comes after a lot of struggle typically with Chitra people. And, and, but when they get it, they become stars. They're those people that typically really shine bright in their field. Um, and they, they will typically have something a little bit inflexible in their nature, like Mars. My, Mars is a little bit inflexible. They're not so adaptable. They're not always so, they can be laid back but they're not always willing to budge from what they feel or what they believe. And somehow they get themselves to that point by that, by that inflexibility. They kind of push themselves um, like that Mars, that pointed spear, you know, um, they're able to push themselves into the situations that they need to be in, but sometimes with a lot of effort, um, a lot of listening to other people and having to compromise and negotiate, even though Chitra people are not always the best negotiators. They listen to other views, but they're not always the best negotiators because they do understand the mechanics of something. And they want, they, they know it needs to go a certain way. So they're, they're very um, unlikely to budge on that many times, but they gain honor through that. They gain, they gain respect through that. Um, but I really wanted to emphasize this punya here, the punya chayani shakti, because when we think of merit, I, I just want to bring us to a reality about this. Is, is merit opulence and wealth and beauty and all these things that we value in society? Or is merit something secret and something hidden and something that represents our true character inside, whether we're living on the streets or whether we're, you know, it could, you could walk past a person on the street and not understand the merit that they have inside. The pearl, this hidden inside. It's this this whole thing with punya and glory, and you know I've heard this a lot. Like, oh, a person will be wealthy because they have good karma. It's a certain kind of good karma, but is that good karma allowing them to increase the storehouse of merit? And so Aditya Ji, this is where I I, I are um, actually Bharat Ram Ji. You brought up Jupiter. With Ch Chitra Nakshatra, I think that is, it is beautiful because Jupiter is the main karaka of punya, of merit. And so this nakshatra dealing directly with accumulating merit, how do we accumulate it? Through Jupiter, the things related to Jupiter, most commonly, the things related to Jupiter. So, um, this shouldn't be misunderstood as someone having merit because there's some shining star. That's, um, we idolize celebrities, for instance. What are we idolizing? So I, I actually want to pull it back to that, to the Jupiterian aspect, which is so crucial to understanding what real merit is. So anyway, I don't want to go more on that, but that's, it's very important with Chitra for people that have Chitra to understand what real merit is and what their responsibility is in life because they are sitting at the middle of the path and their decision-making becomes very important in that place. Decision-making is very important for Chitra. And because it's a Tamasic Nakshatra, um, Chitra people are often put in places where they're, they're, it's not clear what path they should go or what temptation or what, which thing they should do. 
and they're at a place of more having to make that hard decision. Should I, should I sacrifice my life for the good of others? Yes. According to Jupiter, yes. Yes, that is the moral thing to do. That is the right. If you can help others, yes, you should. You know, but that's not always a decision we make. So the selfishness needs to be kept in check here in this point of Chitra, the laziness, which a person with Chitra is very industrious, so you wouldn't always see the tamasic quality. But the tamasic quality can come in at the selfishness and the complacency, right? No, I was telling it was the most uh, tamasic, tamasic nakshatra, correct? Yes, yes, most tamasic. They say Chitra is the most tamasic. Yes, a person might not always see clearly that, that they need to get over themselves to help others. They need to actually take themselves out of their self-absorbed state. Even if they're an industrious person and they think they're doing so much for society, think about the qualities of Virgo. Once again, it's seva. So Chitra people are called to a great responsibility, I feel. And this is the pearl. It is the agitation. You know, you look at, look at Gandhiji. What if he wouldn't have done what he did? What if he just wanted to be a famous lawyer in London? You know, or, or he could have been. He was brilliant. He could have been famous in some other way, but he chose to put his life into, that is merit. That is what, that is the creation of beautiful children that would help society. Leading by example. That is the right use of Chitra Nakshatra. Um, even if you're in a superficial industry like makeup, or so, which you'll see a lot of Chitra people in those, there's still, this is still something that you can still conduct yourself in a way that is benefiting society. I don't like this whole thing with people thinking, oh, this is spiritual and this is not spiritual. No, everything, if spirituality is real, everything in life is spiritual, everything from the fashion industry to the, the, the ashram, it's all spiritual. You can't, you can't, you can't say that every action, what I'm trying to say is every action is accounted. Everything is accountable. It just because you're, you're in something that doesn't seem spiritual, your actions are witnessed by Chitra Gupta, the hidden picture. The hidden picture, right? That's Chitra. And I think, Dr. Arjun Paiji, were you the one that asked if people with Chitra, it, like when they put up a post, sometimes they'll delete it? Were you the one? Yeah, that, I think, no, it was, I think Sandeep. Yeah, it was me. Sandeep. Yeah, yeah. Sandeep, yeah, that's a really good point. I've seen that. Or they made the least. So they, they destroyed the arrow. Is it? Yeah, these are the natives who you would go for, like, you know, uh, those telegram instant messages where you were message deletes in like one minute, it's 10, 10 minutes, those kind of messages that kind of send. They'll send a message and then the message will get deleted. Or they would, they would be simply the ones who would send you the WhatsApp messages and then they would delete it after some time, you know, <laughs> those kind of things. Yeah. Totally. I've seen that. That's so funny. When I saw that, I was like, that's, yes, they do that. Or, or needing some secrecy as well in their life. Like, um, I think Bart Ramji is that actually said, he actually said that, um, they're independent, you know, that they, they kind of need their own space. And this is the tiger as well. You think of a tiger because that's the animal for this nakshatra. Uh, you have a tiger behind sitting. <laughs> yeah. All my tigers showed up for this. <laughs> So, but yeah, the, um, you think of the tiger, they're very, they, they have their own portion of the jungle and thinking of Punya, you know, tigers are, tigers are struggling right now because of people's actions, right? People are just killing them. And no, no thought. We have no understanding of what real law and real truth is. We have no understanding because social law changes from society to society. It changes. The Greeks had a totally different social structure than India and, and a totally different social structure than what we have right now. You know, it, that you can't say that human law is the law that Chitra is, is maintaining. That's something to do with cosmic law. If truth is the foundation, 
then it has to do with cosmic law, not, not laws in society. However, you will see the trickling down of this reflection in Chitra natives, like you will see lawyers and people like that because it is that interest in the law, but that's a shadow of a shadow of a shadow of a shadow of a much deeper thing. So that's my piece, guys. <laughs> uh, Uji, what about uh, Ketu and Chitra? Oh, yes. Okay. So I've always noticed, and this is something I haven't necessarily read it anywhere. This is something I've noticed through um, giving reading after reading for so many years, um, that there's something very special about Ketu and Chitra. And you can go through charts and you will start seeing this yourself. I think you even said that Tesla, did he, did he have it? And see, I, I wasn't even thinking of it. Yeah, it was, has, yeah, Mars and Ketu, I think. Mars and Ketu. And he's got Mars, and the Dasha Lord there. And too. Ketu, yeah. And yeah. Ketu, yeah. And I didn't even know that. I wasn't even referring to him, but just from giving readings. Um, Ketu and Chitra becomes, um, it becomes, it gives something to, it gives some kind of inner awareness of the, um, of something very secret and something very hidden. And so you'll see very brilliant inventors, um, people in their, their fields where they really think out of the, speaking of thinking out of the box with the abstract mind of Pisces. But this is, Ketu here becomes, um, I almost want to say in some cases, even spiritually enlightened, even if the person is the most worldly person you could imagine, I would have these business people sit in front of me and I would start talking to them. And I started realizing their understanding was as much as any astrologer I've ever met, any yogi I've ever, their natural understanding of the mechanics of the universe, but they hid it. They, they it was like hidden. It was concealed. Um, it was like, you would never guess it. It's like that person in disguise that might seem, might seem like the most, um, most like involved in Maya. <laughs> You could say like in the world that you, you would just think you would never think that this person was carrying around this understanding. And as soon as they start talking or as soon as you start talking, they're not only receiving it, but they, they even have a depth that um, complements yogic philosophy. So there's something very special about Ketu and Chitra um, that deals with, I would even say the, um, the truth, the foundation part, because after all, Ketu is the finalization. Ketu is the truth. Ketu is the ending. The sixth sense comes through Ketu. Ketu is the one that transcends this, the, the, the senses, right? So, um, so when you get this in Chitra, which is a sign of Chitra Gupta as well, then you're ha you almost have like a double energy happening. You almost have like a, and the people, they don't mind being cloaked. They don't mind being hidden. They, do, they, do, they won't be uh, showing. They, they don't show off. They're, they're very, I've just seen this over and over that they have like a hidden depth about them that I, I somehow very much respect because you would never, they're not wearing the robes and they're not, you know, they're not making a show, but they have something, some gem inside of them that's just um, related to some deeper truth that they, they, yeah. So that's, and it's, it's oftentimes silent until you pull it out. Eve yeah. can I, is it fine? Uh, are you done or should I keep these slides? Uh, oh, well, Santip Ji can share now. Yeah. Santip Ji, yes, I think you should be able to share, but I think this is very, very profound, Eve Ji. You know, whatever you've shared was so excellent. And I think everybody, should when you say chitra chit what does chit mean chit means to think to comprehend people don't think of we you know even looking at beautiful pictures even looking at beautiful artifacts like you know jewelry ornaments you know uh, uh, whatever you talk about aircrafts making weapons all of this unless you know and interpret what are you going to do with chitra it can be disastrous because the other name for Chitra was Arista. Arista means which can bring you destruction. If you don't get the balance right, I think that's how, you know, um, Eve has very beautifully brought out those themes of Chitra with law, truth, and also having wonderful children. 
Now, there was something that I uh, I wanted to, uh, before Santip Ji starts, I just wanted to say, I've never heard this before, but I think uh, when Bharat Ramji was mentioning, I had to actually look at my notes. And then I came across uh, in Jataka Bharanam, there is a, a text called Jataka Bharanam. In Jataka Bharanam, they say um, that people with Chitra Nakshatra, they like to wear beautiful and fashionable clothes. That is almost known. But they also say they are well versed in Kama Shastra, art of making love. I don't know. I never knew about this. But I, when I read this from my notes, and they would be excellent scholars and they enjoy life. This is what Jataka Bharanam says. And then Mohurta Chintamani on Chitra, Nakshatra, they say it's good for taking and making medicines and collecting herbs. This is another thing which was very unique about this Nakshatra. But I didn't know about the Kama Shastra, the art of making love. I think with... Bharat Ramji mentioned that point. Correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, Bharat mentioned. Yeah. But then I was thinking why Chitra and the art of making love would be something which is connected. But then I was looking at my notes and then I saw, okay, Jatil Bharanam says this. Yes. So Santip Ji, yes, over to you. No. No, actually, there was one more point, like for general point. Actually, I saw some people like our video comments and as Bharat Ramji puts Chitra Nakshatra in different houses, so people are saying they should, you should also mention about how planet, each planet behave in each Nakshatra. So that was also one thing. What we should, what, what we should do collectively is we should get a book out. <laughs> I think that will be a massive book on Nakshatras. I think that is something which is, we, we keenly working towards, but we'll get that out. I think Evji and you know Santip, Aditya, Bharat, all of us we are working in different phases of writing books on nakshatras. That is a, that's been a dream. I think I don't know when Evji will tell us our eleventh house will get activated. The desire to bring out this book. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Arjun Paiji, I first of all wanted to say just really quick, um, you know about the Kama Sutra, and I know Bharat <clears throat> mentioned this point too, which is brilliant. I thought that was brilliant. Um, and also about the, um, what was the other point you said? Uh, they're good at debate. Medicine. Yeah, said, debates. Oh, yeah, debates. I think you said something about uh, philosophers. But what I've specifically seen with philosophy, these, these people are good at debate specifically because it's all about strategy. Um, and, and then the other thing is a medicines, all the Mars nakshatras. All the Hello. nakshatras that are connected because in, you'll see with prashna that Danishta was considered a good time to study Ayurvedic medicine and pulse reading, uh, marma mm. points, all of those things. And then Rigashira, you've got Soma, which is oh, the plant yes. world. Yeah. So you've got the trine of all three of these nakshatras, um, these, the Dasha Lord being Mars, which is Bhumi Putra. Mm. Right? True. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, Bhumi Putra, the, the child of the earth, right? The son of the earth. So uh, Mars always has to do with land, earth, um, herbal things uh, or medicines, as well as a surgeon. He's very specific. He's very, um, he, he's extremely streamlined and meticulous in his work. So you want a, a doctor to have a good Mars. I think it is, <laughs> when you eat medicine, it's fighting, correct? So again, it's Martian aspect there. Fighting a disease, antibiotic, absolutely. Antibiotic and all, so. Yes. Wow. Fighting a disease is absolutely true. And then there's um, the whole element of Mars that deals with cutting and, you know, the precision of mm. the surgeon. So, yeah, absolutely. But Chitra, Chitra Nakshatra specifically <coughs> is that if there is an Ayurvedic physician or if there's a, say, a Chinese a person pr uh, practicing traditional Chinese medicine or something of the sort, um, if they have Chitra, um, it's just going to make them better at it. I've noticed that, like it's one of those signs that will just make you better at what you do. And is there, there's also what I've read, and maybe this could be a theme, uh, you know, EFG about all the Mars rule nakshatras. I've seen Ragashira have this, uh, perfumes, perfumery, incense and scent makers, all are connected Aromatherapy. with- Aromatherapy? Aromatherapy, exactly. Yes, Essential uh, oils, aromatherapy, you know, um, all of this will be very strongly connected to mass rule nakshatras. I've seen it with, I, I don't know about Dhanishta, but I've definitely seen it with Mrigashira and with Chitra. Well, I've noticed it with Mrigashira specifically, especially when people have <clears throat> there, they can't stand strong scents. 
They they have such oh, a hard yeah. time with that's smell. because of the smell. Yeah, their yeah, sense they, of smell very keen is sense so of smell. heightened. Hi. They will have specific scents that they really like and enjoy, and other scents they're very black and white about it. They they like certain scents and they don't like other scents. Um, yeah, they're very and they're very picky. Um, what would you call that? Um, very picky, even about the foods they eat sometimes because of the scent. Mm -hmm. Like those kind, like if it deals, if it's a planet or or a house that's dealing with food, or with nourishment or with anything like that, they can even be picky over those things. Like very, um, yeah, picky is the word, I guess. Like they just they choose, they choose certain things, and they really don't like other things. Um, but I have seen actually Venus and Chitra make give a big appetite. <laughs> I have seen that where the person <clears throat> will like everything. Like they just a Venus specifically. I've seen Jupiter sometimes too, but Venus, I've seen the person will like a lot of variety in their food. So, I don't know if that's the tiger, just the, the ferocious <laughs> appetite. I don't know if anyone has Venus and Chitra that can attest to that, but I, I have seen just they like food. They like it. They really enjoy it. <laughs> so but um, okay, I think Santip G is waiting to yeah, get Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, beautiful points. Uh, I mean, you know, you just went in depth about the foundation of uh, above and below, from which you can probably derive all every other aspects of Chitra, which is very great. Uh, I mean, we rarely get to hear that kind of explanation for the foundation above and foundation below. So that was very beautiful. Um, and yeah, also what. Uh, Aditya mentioned. So one couple of things I just want to mention quickly. What uh, um, yeah, we are already at two hours. <laughs> so I'll try to summarize things very quickly. Uh, but uh, even before that, uh, Dr. Payan mentioned that Chitra natives will wake up around 3 to 4 a.m. The reason was that uh, they, the Animal Association of Tiger, the tiger is mostly active during um, uh, 3 to 4 a.m. That's when they hunt. So that's the reason why these natives are more awake and active during these uh, this time also the uh, other point was also the, the, it was interesting to see that durga connection with chitra which aditya uh, dr toy mentioned durga was is seen also often a tiger not just a lion sometimes in some pictures she also rides a tiger so that's an interesting thing now uh, okay so I, i'll just uh, say share some points which i thought were interesting with regard to chitra the first point for me as an astrologer, that was interesting was that um, you begin astrology by dividing the sky into zodiacs, into 12 rashis. And many times, as Aditya mentioned, Spika is the first star which you use as a marker to, to determine the directly opposite sky is Aries. You know? So there is this interesting idea that you are actually beginning things from Chitra. You know? So it's very interesting to think about that. You are actually beginning even astrology which is the division of zodiac or division of the study of sky by uh, determining Aries uh, opposite to Chitra. So that was an interesting thing. If you contemplate deeply, it is almost as if, okay, Twastar created the entire universe. You are acknowledging Twastar first, and then you are acknowledging the rest of the zodiac. So it was kind of a very uh, interesting for me always just to, to hear a term called Chitra Paksha in Amsha. You know, so that was a very interesting um, but yeah, you know, uh, Chitra again, uh, there are many, many uh, great points which, which was already mentioned. Chitra is uh, great uh, with jewelry. Uh, also, like uh, any these natives will be, will be straight up going for the pearl necklaces, will be going for the diamond jewelry and all those flashy kind of jewelry naturally. You have Rahu there, you might even go for imitation jewelry a lot. That is one thing. Uh, one interesting thing was that, again, it's like something that's flashy, something that's bright. So many natives are inclined towards photography. You know, these are the natives who will take constantly selfies all the time. Say they have an important planet, they'll be taking a lot of selfies. That's one thing else. A lot of selfies, a lot of pictures, a lot of images in their life, a lot of photographs. Dr. Pai mentioned photographs uh, with respect to their home location, if you have Chitra. Other thing is also these natives might actually be interested in the technical side of photography and filmography with the Virgo association, Virgo side of Chitra. They might think they might be the ones who would like to Photoshop things, add more filters, you know, and then share the pictures, those kind of things. Also uh, with uh, Chitra again, um, uh, the picture thing is very interesting because um, if you think about 
picture movies movies are moving pictures really so they might have a natural fascination with pictures but uh, there are higher level of pictures out there so like uh, things like three dimensional movies 3d movies that's when the chitra native will really get excited they'll be very excited about going for the 3d movies you know straight up and they they like preferring the visual uh, biggest thing with chitra is that they really have to visualize things that's the biggest they actually have the ability to visualize things in their mind and then bring that into fruition that is the biggest gift they have and if they don't think they cannot bring it down into fruition and many times they just have this gift that's how just that's just how their mind works and this pictorial pictorial ability can can be translated into this modern day world of uh, you know uh, animes these natives will be fascinated with animation movies they will be fascinated with animes they will be fascinated with comics moving pictures you know again comics again uh, like uh, point where um, you see this uh, theme of like pictures moving and uh, the modern day version so imagine a sculpture it's the celestial architect who has created a sculpture and the sculpture is moving suddenly you have a robot right so it's like a puppet who is moving puppet with strings attached as a robot right these natives are actually attracted to robotics these natives will be sitting down and watching all the robot animes all the time you know they'll be actually be very so fascinated with up to the point where uh, you know uh, they might actually prefer to have robots at home and uh, this is a side where like you know the, uh, these are the natives will go for um, those automatic vacuum cleaners in their home because that's a robot that is the cleaning job in your home and uh, other thing with uh, robots is again uh, not just robot sculpture is a big theme with chitra these natives can sculpt things out and you will prominently see sculptures a lot of sculptures in around their home a lot of sculptures a lot of technical sculpting things a lot of strong trick uh, abilities things so that nature. and uh, so other thing with again see moving pictures isn't just robots or moving isn't just comics or um, you know uh, a picture is actually a deep symbol as well and a bit of uh, and not just uh, so in in occult world if you draw a picture immediately it would be a yantra so these natives have an interest and in deep occult gifts a strong occult gifts because of these yantra making ability and what evji mentioned uh, getting stuck in the body level is a very beautiful point because our body is ultimately a yantra again you know so you need to go even beyond the yantra you need to make use of how do you make use of the yantra in a most efficient way so that is the way to think about you know the body and uh, chitra again uh, the beautiful thing about chitra again yeah go ahead interesting sandeep you were talking about animation and all and yesterday i was looking uh, my my cousin uh, he just uh, was talk he's into animation and uh, we were talking about that and when you said i said okay let me check what he has and he has got rahu in chitra so rahu in chitra again animation in he's into animation so uh, yeah so that yeah, was exactly so like you know uh, yeah i think you, yeah exactly what uh, you doing uh, uh so but uh, anyway it's like uh, uh with animation strong animation abilities with chitra definitely no doubt about chitra pictures moving pictures thinking visually these are the natives who are actually image conscious you know they are very conscious of the image they put forward they might even be willing to post a fake picture on their face or on their instagram <laughs> so that they can project an image these are the natives who will be much pro- worried about the projection they have and this is when this is what evg said about okay do you want to project the lawful truth you know that is going to be interesting so because and, uh, I, i feel chitra is like the projection of the first point of aries on the other side it's like exactly <laughs> and see and this is the deepest point right so like vishwakarma or twasar actually created or projected this entire world into being so that's a that's like a primal point the primary point so it's entire world of maya and these are the natives who will actually be using the software maya you know for any animation software and things like that and uh, these are the uh, these natives will actually be trying to project an image so to the point tesla was actually carrying uh, say supposedly a secret uh, suitcase of weapons you know so for like uh, for 10 years or so they didn't know whether to attack him to arrest him to steal his things you know eventually like uh, he got arrested because they didn't know okay was he going to make use of this uh, weapon to destroy <laughs> over at so these natives will be actually is will post a picture and then make a network you know make the network discuss it and they will okay i got my goal achieved you know so it's those kind of things obviously with pictures again you know a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, definitely strong uh, themes with um, 
see this is the biggest 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 secret see the biggest secret of uh, chitra natives definitely deal with secrets there is no doubt they they will delete messages all of that but uh, biggest thing with uh, chitra is that chitra is the last nakshatra of kuri ruled rashi that is actually pointing to what mercury qualities can highly evolve towards biggest quality of uh, mercury or writing is a picture a picture is worth a thousand words right so it's as if that you are finally reaching the highest ex what mercury can reach which is the form mercury is all about form and everything and many times these natives will be aware of deep deep secrets to the point where they just cannot verbalize it. <laughs> they'll get stuck it's like i can't talk in pictures maybe i'll try to talk in pictures and this is what you find with spiritual masters actually leaving behind sculptures with symbology with deep symbols behind so you're trying to interpret it yeah go ahead uji okay okay so um okay so we said about that uh, so black box right black box is a typical chitra kind of thing because it's mis you know what it is it's, and these natives are mechanically gifted these are mechanical geniuses these are geniuses with their hands these are geniuses with their minds just pure genius you know technical geniuses these are the natives who will be dealing in architecting architectures they are natural architects but they'll be dealing also with systems architectures so they natives who are naturally inclined to eating entire systems so like kendra created an entire system of astrology right he was these are the natives who would also love to create and organize all the information very in a tabular fashion and to the point where um, it's a very uh, funny because um, tabular fashion right so if you arrange numbers in a table you get a matrix of numbers and then if you go into matrix movie you have a creator behind the matrix right so these are the natives who would want to create their own matrices create their own worlds live in that matrix or create their own matrix and these are the natives who be naturally inclined towards playing with the entire universes involved you know and these are the natives who actually to create their own universe literally or to live inside a different universe within that themselves um that is one thing again uh, you know systems are the common term for computer uh, people you know they know they will understand they are dealing with systems architecture so again you have this chitra quality is playing out there um yeah and also secret pictures <laughs> you know sexual scandals with pictures that's a very common thing with chitra they they might either get some issue with pictures or you know, some conflict with their pictures their relationships and uh, so these are some uh, yeah and a uh, interesting nakshatra point is that uh, chitragupta was the assistant to yamaraj so these natives might become like assistant to yamaraj and then eventually they will complete their create their own systems you know because these yeah, chitragupta was always recording the deeds of a person so there is this natural theme and also it said that chitragupta was kind of uh, when you die so chitragupta is acting the you know your life of uh, hologram a holographic life image where you are actually in your deeds what happened what did you do why did you do all of that so it's like these natives may also be interested in holographic things interested in holograms all of that um so the, so again they have this barni connection so barni nakshatra natives and chitra natives might actually find connected to barni nakshatra natives at some point that can happen and interestingly chitra chitra natives can actually design weapons like apj abdul kalam um, the former president actually had something in chitra so he designs you know he designed the agni missiles and things so now uh, so those are the points which i had to share but, uh, you know i think we have already crossed time but what i wanted to share was actually what i would actually recommend everyone is that uh, just sharing uh, the pai padati analysis of chitra that makes everything that has been discussed so far completely beautiful and i would uh, i would just go just briefly over it like so you see look at uh, so you know chitra nakshatra it is falling in the junction between virgo and uh, and then uh, you know pai padati you can look at uh, think of the soul sashipada number and all of that so fifth house eighth house team ninth house first second house teams all that can that all that can be correlated now the nakshatra lord is it is exalted in capricorn rashi and then you have its mulatrikon falling in aries rashi and then it's debilitated in cancer rashi now when you begin to do the pai padati analysis this is when everything is very very interesting so if you look at the exalted house uh, moon house and debilitated house you get this kind of 5th house 8th house and 11th house themes playing out so 5th house is children this is deeper mysteries 8th house is sexual scandals and things like that 11th house is actually gains from work you know and uh, so this is this is the case for first pada and second pada of chitra where 5th house 8th house and 11th house themes can actually play out 
Now, for the third part and fourth part of Chitra, which is falling in Libra, the houses belonging to the Rashis will completely change. It will become fourth house for exalted Rashi, Mulatrakon Rashi, seventh house, and then uh, double data Rashi. Now, if you simply combine these, look at these two houses and look at the gain from, gains from work, you know, that is the result of the Nakshatra. Now you have the 11th house theme of gains, which is happening with the Virgo Padas. And then you have the work part coming from the Libra Padas, right? So gains from work is the final desire. It's, uh, Chitra is also desires, some desires to create, produce wonderful children. So if you make um, Virgo Rashi, Pad, Rashi uh, as the ascendant, you have uh, fifth house is where my exalted. So you can see that which is Capricorn Rashi. So you can see all these, what I would really encourage the viewers to simply take a picture. <laughs> And uh, take a picture of this and simply rewatch whatever was discussed, all or whatever was discussed to this point. You can see everything playing out beautifully. So, um, yeah. leave this screen up because this is so good. I always love the visuals. Um, I was wondering about uh, JFK. Does anyone have his chart on? No, you can. No. I just JFK wanted to, sometimes uh, Bart yeah. or someone has his. No, has no, parts, no, but, yeah. No, we don't have his chart. I, I wonder if he had I can, is it junior? You're looking at JFK junior or senior? President, um, John F. Kennedy. Okay. No, I think there's junior and senior as well, isn't it? Let me pull out the chart. One second. I unfortunately don't know. Yeah. What were you uh, hinting at? Yeah? Uh, well, I'm looking at these themes with the Pai Padithi and I just, I, because a lot of his life, <laughs> It sounds like I'm just thinking of even going up, a, um, keeping secrets and getting even murdered for a secret reason. Um, and I, I'm just looking at the, the play of these houses and I'm, I'm curious if he had Chitra. Right. So secret, again, secret is very interesting because if you look at uh, the Virgo Padas of Chitra, eighth house is where Mars has its Mulatrakon. Mars actually owns the eighth house and the third house of communication. So naturally, eighth house of secret and third house of communication. So secret communication is natural for Chitra. You know, you can see. Think about all those astronauts that have it. Uh, there's so many astronauts that have it. There's so many inventors that have it. There's, it's a very brilliant sign that it often is put in positions of having secrets. Right. No, yeah, JFK, go ahead, does JFK does not have anything in Chitra. Is it Hasta? Uh, no, nothing in has Hasta. something in Virgo, yeah. no? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right, EFG. He has it in Chitra. He has his ascendant in Chitra. Let me share the screen one second. I yeah, think okay. I have I'm a feeling it's Chitra. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you see? Yes. So the Chitra. Oh, yeah. Magna. Okay. Oh, the second, second father of Chitra. The Lagna. Yeah. I had a feeling, it just, when you yeah. were talking, I had a feeling. I thought he had something in Virgo and I was like, that is Chitra. Okay. I am in my kitchen. <laughs> activating, activating my Chitra. <laughs> activating the waistline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> me, me too, Aditya Ji. I'm going to join you there soon. <laughs> yeah, it's so he had a uh, Chitra ascendant and secret messages. He was killed, assassinated, you know. Again, uh, what was really interesting is also, um, if you look at his 11th house, he has Saturn there. And so really he did gain and, you know. Uh, but it's very interesting that uh, the friend of uh, Strong Chitra, he had his famous affair with uh, Marilyn Monroe, right? So it's like, uh, it's also a very... The whole thing. Yeah. Describing, I was just thinking, I, was, I wonder. Yeah, I so, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Dr. Pai, can you share in the screen? Let me yeah, share stop, this. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Because uh, if you, this, so this is, so far what I've shared is like, uh, okay, I've shared uh, um, the Pai Padiri with Chitra. But like, uh, you know, uh, the great thing with uh, Chitra again is like, uh, you know, and the thing which we all end up missing. Just give me a minute, let's see. So, so, you know, actually, Actually, Chitra is the nakshatra where Venus is debilitated. So as per, uh, you know, as per Pai Padadi, if you were to think about um, just having an invisible influence in Chitra, then what you would get is that uh, Venus is debilitated at 28 degrees in Chitra, right? 
and it is a so if you were to consider that then venus has an invisible influence upon chitra because it is debilitated at 28 degrees and then, then we analyze the same rashi just for venus um as we did for mars immediately you get picture so you can see venus is exalted in uh, pisces which is the seventh house which is uh, debilitated in, which is having its gone in uh, you know libra which is the second house from chitra and then it's having it's having its mulatra gone in the second house and it's debilitated in uh, virgo again which is the first house and venus is the second lord and ninth lord now if you have to combine these two these two maps of venus and uh, mars right so twaster's daughter which will be fifth house from uh, chitra twaster's daughter's partner the you know jupiter's son is actually debilitated so mars is debilitated here so twaster's partner would die which is the eighth house here and twaster's daughter would kind of uh, you can see how the daughter would always approach her father you know which is venus being the ninth house ninth lord from chitra again you know so there is this philosophical theme even the daughter's partner theme playing out uh, through this axis for mars being debilitated and exalted that is one way i was thinking about that then uh, yeah venus is debilitated here right so these natives can be naturally be inclined towards uh, you know um, what do you say sexual kind of going for affairs you know naturally because venus being debilitated here that is one way to go for that and also like venus uh, you could say even to the point where you know <laughs> relationship becomes a transaction you know you could say that because for them mentally they might be thinking like that and that you know that has all of its all of its right to it you know so it's like it's like these natives have to be aware that's where that's clearly you can understand then energy getting stuck at that point you know it's not just a transaction there is something deeper within that right and uh, what is really interesting is also that if you look at this right so uh, all this theme of second house connection of uh, food or you know we were talking about all these topics all this time so how we would eat food and you can see the venus being venus having a small trigon in second house so there is a natural theme of bringing out food and yes, even like uh, i think venus specifically be the one that tends yeah. to enjoy the when in chitra yeah right also okay. like uh, venus uh, you could say that um, even uh, uh, the law part you know the interesting that uh, law and truth so you know how would you connect venus with that you know so then it's suddenly different uh, suddenly it's big, making you different because um, I'm seeing Venus. something by seeing this too. You know, I don't know if any of you guys have seen this, but with Chitra there can be like one of the most common combinations for dictators is um Ashwini Barani combined with Chitra. Is one of the most common because I always look at I look at everything through connection like that with codes. So I've always I always note these things like oh this created this <laughs> this created that. And so I've noticed with um those two there tends to be um a very powerful energy that 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 happens and it can result in a very destructive forceful energy but it also just in everyday life Um have you guys noticed that there is some dark side of chitra that deals with judgment or being unforgiving in some way a little a little judgmental towards other people or I've this is a dark side I usually don't like to focus so much on people's shadow because that's not who they really are but um but I've noticed with chitra and I'm just looking at all these houses that are highlighted there can be some kind of like um iron uh judge like an iron fist like the person can be a little yeah yeah the iron fist you said iron fist right so it's like mars is having the iron right i was just looking at this yeah and also like if you uh, the law part the judgmental is law so this is my yes. law my judgment i'm thinking really that, that aspect can clearly be that also like uh, barney connection with chitra like barney is yamaraj Bar- barney is definitely judgmental for sure and, and they so you have that other, but there's a unforgiving side to that that can be like right. you think about what it takes to make a dictator is someone who right. thinks they're right right. i am right i have the way and so i was just i was thinking why this combination cuz chitra is so soft is a soft nakshatra <laughs> you know in so many ways is a soft nakshatra um but i was just thinking of combinations when i'm looking at this and going yeah you know there's that side that is severe so 
so with all this i don't know how to say chitra as like a mrudu nakshatra which we come so so why that mrudu part like what what about that mrudu part why why they say that chitra is a mrudu nakshatra by I itself think, it's sure. by itself by itself it's mridu for sure by itself if there's no other influences that would make it harsh but for some reason in combination with other nakshatras that are like let's say barni nakshatra that has a little bit more of a severity to it in the first place for some reason i'm almost curious if the the mridu the soft nakshatras have a um they get influenced by their environment more, they get molded by their environment more. So you will see some of the soft nakshatras combined with some of the more fierce nakshatras where there's almost a fierceness that comes in through the doorway of the soft nakshatra. Even Rigashira can be that way. I mean, look at uh, Fidel Castro. Fid Fidel Castro had heavy Rigashira and um, he also had Barney. He had the combination. So I don't know if it's the Mars nakshatra with the, you know, I'm just, I'm throwing things out for, for people to study because these are things I see in readings and I always note codes with these things and you cannot deny the interconnectedness of everything. Everything's interconnected. Everything's about relationships. Everything in the universe is about how something else interacts with another, how we interact with something else. So, um, specifically with the the mridu nakshatra specifically mrigashira and chitra i've noticed when they come in combination with these other harsher nakshatras there can be a severity specifically barney yeah actually barney can be she, yeah, perfect yeah. barney you know makes sense yeah if you also remember you mentioned that you've seen this combination with even purvashada and barney can make you dictators is that or ashwini purvashada Purva, Shara, and Barney. Yes, it's Barney. Barney. It's Barney that combined with some of these nakshatras because you look at Hitler, no one ever talks about the Purva, Shara. And the ancient people said that Purva, Shara was the first sign of war. war in, a yeah. prashna, in a Prashna chart, Purva, Shara is the first sign of war. So, yeah, and you can see why. It's the two gurus. <laughs> the two gurus, Jupiter and Venus. <laughs> Right. But also just the, the, the whole thing with it. Um, I, we're not on Purva Shara. I could go into that at another time. But it makes sense. You just don't think of that nakshatra in that way. But what are all wars fought over? Philosophy. They're all fought over policy, mm -hmm. philosophy. They're all, I mean, in the end, it's for economy. It's all manipulation. I mean, a lot of this stuff is hidden, secret, um, very bad motivations behind it. But on the surface, the outside is different views, different views. Oh, we don't think you should be treating your people this way. So we're going to come in and we're going to knock out your government and take over your, you know, all these things, the philosophies. Most dictators actually have their own, <coughs> yeah, their own philosophy, their Sorry. own understanding. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's uh, also, you know, uh, one, one, one of those that when you go to war, you need and you know you need you need those weapons and devices and you, you know all those machinery to fight the war. So that's where again Chitra comes in. Chitra. So imagine a Barney native with the Chitra in the native. You know, it's like weapons. Yeah, I was thinking of with all the weapons and yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then then the children which is being produced, right? It's being actually weapons. And here is one one other. Uh, positive side of weapons is the devices. The devices, which, so it's like the irritation which the inventor is feeling. I need to solve this problem. I'll create a device so that I can solve problem. And uh, the interestingly, I was reading about this uh, earlier today that native uh, cultures uh, world over they create all kinds of um, devices to store stories within that story. So they would take and all this pearl. They'll take a necklace, and all these necklaces will have different beads, and each of these beads will be having different stories to say. And it's like they are visualizing things. And then, you know, and then uh, you take one pearl, the story happened. You take to another pearl and the story happened. And then there are actually, there are, uh, you put each on one cloth. And then the sacred cloth, which is actually kept in secret and passed down over. And uh, with Chitra again, Chitra, it's also following Libra, Chitra flashy. So clothes, all of that team can also be there. Models, natural models, natural people, you know, perfect, you know. They, the ones who actually have a penchant for like, I, I need all the camera lights upon me, those kind of things. 
And I uh, when you look at combine with maga. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> did you did you guys? Yeah. No, I just wanted to. I something came to my mind. I just wanted to uh, you know validate this with uh, the rest of the panelists here because this is a very important thing that I've observed, but I've never discussed this. Is if you look at the nakshatra, which is previous to it and next to it, right? They give you a lot of clues about what that nakshatra is. For example, let us say, look at the previous nakshatra, which is hasta. Hasta has to do uh, artifacts, isn't it? Which uses the hands. And when it comes to chitra, it becomes much more about perfection, achieving perfection. Hasta is still about skill. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. But when it comes, it becomes much more refined, much more. And what I saw is this is what I wanted to say. You look at the previous nakshatra, okay, it is a level nakshatra. It's called a Triyanga Mukha, facing forward, which is Hasta. Again, when you come into Chitra, it is a level nakshatra. And then when you go into the next nakshatra, which is Swati, again, it's a level nakshatra. And look at the, the quality of each of these nakshatras. The previous nakshatra, which is uh, Hasta, it's called a Shitra and then Lagu nakshatra. Shitra means swift or quick. <clears throat> and then when you come into Chitra, it is Mradu, and then you go into Swati, it means uh, it is Chara, which means movable. So imagine if if some object is coming into these three nakshatras, look at you know it gets the it gets the momentum in Hasta because it gets the speed, acceleration, and when it it, it is cruising in Chitra, and then it becomes independent, which is like in Swati, whenever it goes into Swati, it's, it's like in the in the space. Swati is independent. You know, you're completely detached from everything. <clears throat> so I've seen this work very well because if you look at even the Gandantas, right? If you look, the most important Gandanta is between Jesta and Mula. That's because you know Jesta is level, and Mula is facing downwards. So imagine what happens to the planet which is transiting, like the moon. Suddenly there is a fall. Right, that's that's exactly what happens. Even when we go to uh, Ashlesha and Maga, this is not very bad because Ashlesha is downward facing, Maga is again downward facing. But when you come into Jesta and Mula, you will see it is level and suddenly facing down. So it's like a fall. That's why that Gandanta point is so severe. Severe, exactly. And Compared to Revati than... and yes, yeah, Revati again. Revati is level. Ashwini is again level. Yeah, that Revati one, I don't even pay that much attention to that. In readings, I'm just speaking from readings, that yeah. one is not normally that intense. But the Jesht Mula yes. is quite, yeah. So think about it, because that might answer what Aditya was saying. Why is this called a Mradu? So imagine if something comes into Hasta and then it is just cruising because it's level. There is no up and down. Because Uttara... Algony is, is facing up. So wherever you see that there is a facing up and a facing down and suddenly you know things change, that means the pathway of the planet uh, of the planet moving through that nakshatra is going to change. So imagine if it is level and suddenly it has to take off. <clears throat> you know, uh, Urdhomukha, going upwards. I think this has some key in understanding nakshatras and how each of them are linked to each other. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, these were certain sense. points. Yeah, it makes sense to connect the nakshatras to examine the qualities and how those qualities are moving, you know, from one nakshatra to the other. So perhaps there is something actually how going is it transitioning? Move. Exactly. Well, the how second, is the transitioning happening? The second yeah. nakshatra, for many nakshatra, of course, is the sampat nakshatra. So it's the it's um it's so imagine if after you know if the second nakshatra EG like you mentioned if it's because you mentioned some example you know so imagine if some planet is going through it and the second nakshatra is suddenly a fall what happens? yeah definitely uh or suddenly there is a rise or it, 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 it disturbance in the energy so the transformations will be not very seamless you know the the, the transition is not seamless for the planet I think you're on mute. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, uh, Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm yeah. having. Is my screen breaking up? I'm having some problems here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your your screen is breaking up. Your chitra is definitely going out. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm having some problems. Yeah, I've had to adjust this thing a few times. I don't know. I'm. I need help from a tech, actually. <laughs> Someone help me. Um, but yes, Dr. Arjun Paiji, I, I really do feel that. I really do feel what you're saying is that the, the nakshatra before and the nakshatra after. Because if you think of that, the nakshatra after is going to be the, um, the nakshatra before is going to be the Parma Mitra nakshatra. So it's going to be the great friend. Um, and then... Um, you could say great friend, but I find that nakshatra to be very important. And the ninth nakshatra from any nakshatra is very important, actually. Um, so you can, you can tell the story of any nakshatra by looking at the placement from the rest of the nakshatras from that nakshatra. Next scene. So, <clears throat> so Santip, sorry, I think we had interrupted you when you were going on a... Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's all I had. We have made another Bollywood movie too. To understand. <laughs> I don't think we'll be invited anymore on KRS channel after this. I think uh, he's, he's, he's told it many times. <laughs> Bharat Ramji also seems to be you know, in a different state of home. Bharat Ramji, almost... are you still with us? <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is um, excellent, I think. You know, although there are a lot of deep points. points. Yeah, also we and had to have... pay attention to Jupiter. Hunter made us talk. <laughs> At least now yeah. it on Jupiter. <laughs> blame it on Jupiter. Blame it. Increasing pace, I blame it on all. <laughs> I will too, Aditya Ji. <laughs> Jupiter. But don't blame it on the waistline or blame it on the clothes that you're wearing. So one of them. So you can neither choose. <laughs> So Aditya's, uh, you know, clothes are shrinking. I guess. So, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I that's what. Know. That's what gets. He gets a feeling. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I think that's true. Anyway, guys, I think this was a great discussion. Thank you, all the panelists. You know, thank you, Bharat. Thank you, EG. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you, Santip. I think this was a great discussion. Although I, these discussions have been very lengthy. I think there are so many nuggets which come out of these discussions. I, I never would have thought I would get to learn so much from you know being part of such discussions. And that's what I really like. Because when you are completely engrossed and you love, are you passionate about nakshatras and you start discussing with scholars and people who are practitioners also, you know. Uh, so that actually adds so much of uh, information to your database. Otherwise, you would just be doing things. And as Eve, she always mentions, uh, you know, we don't know what is right and what is wrong. We just interpret us. You know, we're not coming here and saying this is how this nakshatra operates. Obviously, you might find, you know, a um, few hundred more themes which might come out of these nakshatras and through discussions or research and findings of people. So that would be more valuable for us to learn from your experiences and your observations as well. You know, we usually get uh, good feedback from people saying that, oh, this was excellent, this was dead on, you know, this was as per. But also please share what are the other things that you feel we might have missed on. Because we're obviously we're, we're all learning and we're just uh, adding another drop into this ocean. Even we're talking about even Chitra Nakshatra, it's just a drop in the ocean. So the knowledge is so enormous. We know what we know. But we do not know how much we do not know. So with that, I think, you know, this beautiful discussion, let's uh, wrap it up. But thank you, everybody. And uh, namaste.